We should probably do the, start the show before I rant about the thing that's been bothering me all weekend. Okay. In in relation to the environment and what you know the things just um, like half the coral reef is dead. <laughs> the well, Great just, Barrier just reef. the you know because I'm gonna I'm going to uh, Atlanta to do the track hawk, mm-hmm. which yeah, sort of you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. I sort of, what happened? What did your face just do? Did our stream just die? No, no, no. My computer's like we can't connect to your phone. I'm like that's not good. Oh, go ahead. Um, it's uh, fun. you know, it, I think maybe it's time to stop <laughs> with, the, with the SUV with the SUVs. Like, mm-hmm. like I drove the the 720 McLaren, and I got like 25 miles a gallon. Like that's pretty good for yeah. Yeah, like if you can make an 800 horsepower car. You get 25 miles per gallon on the highway. Like, all right, I'll fuck with you. Like, but I'm kind of at the point where Hellcat Jeep, you know, I'm sure it'll be fun. I'm sure it'll be good for a laugh. But like, all right, like, let's stop. <laughs> I've had the same thoughts in the yeah. last couple of weeks. I don't yeah. know why. It's weird, symbiotic yeah. thinking. But like, I'm, I'm an eco person in some ways. And then the car, ho- the car hobby is difficult. Like drifting, it, it, you got to think about it a little bit. But then when the Jeep that nobody needs, it is fun. But yeah. it just gets 11 miles per gallon or something. Like, yeah. why? You know, I don't know. I mean, it's like America and all that. And, you know, and, and there's, just, there's a part of this, you know, the um, the antagonistic sort of part of our country that's like, you know, we're allowed to have guns, so I'm going to have 100. Mm-hmm. You know, we have cheap gas, so I'm going to buy the most wasteful thing I possibly can. And, like, I've been there. I kind of yeah. get that. I understand that angle. But it's like... Half our fucking state is on fire, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's like, a good point. And good uh, point. it's just it's 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 and it's like it's not not that I'm saying we don't need 700 horsepower cars, but like, do we need 700 horsepower jeeps? Yes. You know? Do we need them done so efficiently? I guess. Well, and here's you know? and what what brought this on was my conversation in New York with Chris Harris. Like, you you guys were doing your your drive stuff, and I was in the area because my sister got married, and I just came to stop by and say hello because I hadn't seen the boys in forever. And girl, Kristen, and girls, Kathy, Kathy was there as well. Yeah. Not, not to discount the two, but um, um, but I got into a discussion about the track hawk with him. You know, not unlike the discussion we had about the about the uh, Bentego last year with fucking V twelve or W twelve in it, mm-hmm. where and he was just like, "There aren't enough brakes in the world." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, there, "There's just no, you know," because he's like, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Road Atlanta." He was like, "Mate, you could have a shunt, you know, one of those, <laughs> one of those." And, he, and uh, so. I mean, we'll the brakes are real strong. Of course they are. For, you know, however but amount of time. For we'll Road Atlanta in August? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I guess you'll find out. Like how it's, we'll find out. The and are. Lee's coming. So it's like, oh, no. <laughs> Is he, are, you, are you doing a lap with him driving? I don't give a fuck. It ain't my car. Let, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's let him have along. a go. Yeah. I mean, he's got, he can run in like the fucking 20s at Atlanta, like no problem. He could do a flyer for sure. Yeah, but he, you know. He, sometimes poo comes out when he drives. Oh, <laughs> yeah. totally understandable. Did you see on my... Did you see on my Instagram? He sent me a picture of my door card. So bright. It, it is so fire. While Tim pulls that up, let me do the intro of the show. It's the Smoke Entire Podcast because we're doing it live today. We depleted our stock. I'm going to do the ads into the show, and then the whole thing is just going to stay up. So bear with me for just a minute while I intro the Smoking Tire Podcast. Bro, we got StockX. I love StockX. I used StockX to buy my gold G-Shock. And uh, if you love analog cars, there's a good chance you love and mechanical watch as well uh, we've got style performance and practicality at the center of watch and car culture alike our choice for each says something about us who we are and what matters to us well we like to think it does at least when i'm buying a watch i like to take ownership of the experience as much as i can and that is why i love stockx stockx is the world's first online stock market of things for high demand consumer products including sneakers watches and handbags stockx connects buyers and sellers using the same methodology as the world's stock markets, an anonymous live bid ask market. All products are physically authenticated by StockX, allowing participants to focus on the transparency of data available, including real-time market pricing, in-depth market analysis, individual portfolio tracking, historical sales, and volume metrics. Woo! That means no stressing about shady buyers and sellers, no lengthy descriptions, and no blurry pictures to decipher All watches are in excellent or better condition. All you've got to worry about is finding the watch you want and placing a bid you feel comfortable with. 
StockX makes buying and selling watches online a lot better. Uh, give it a try yourself at StockX.com slash smoking. And that's true. I did really, really s- swear to God before I read this, before they came to me. I bought a watch through StockX. I placed a bid. I got the watch. The guy sent the watch to StockX. I sent the money to StockX. They changed hands. It's like a little escrow thing. And I got my watch. They got their money. Everybody happy. The whole process took six days. And I know I was getting something legit. Gold anniversary G Shock, son. Uh, Continental Belts. We've been we're gonna have to fix this ad right now, Zach, because it's this weird the weird things. Weird mm-hmm. things found in cars. We're just going to throw that part of that out the window because that is poor copywriting. You know what else is weird? <laughs> High quality parts. <laughs> you know what else what? is weird? Finding yourself stranded on the ro- side of the road with a snapped <laughs> serpentine <laughs> belt because you your shit dry rotted. We should go, go the other way. Isn't it nice when things work for a very long yeah. time and you don't have to fix it? Like <laughs> yes. a watch or yes. an instrument or a an car. engine, a car. What if you had a, th- a problem with your car where if the belt snapped, your whole engine would destroy itself. That could be real. So keep your stupid belt looking good and running properly. That's why you want to use Continental belts. There we go, Zach. That's way Bingo. better. I bet you didn't know there are in tens of millions of Chrysler, Dodge, Ford, and GM vehicles that roll off the assembly line. They're also OE. That stands for original equipment on the majority of BMWs and Volkswagens. Now, Continental is launching the aftermarket multi-V belt with the OE Pedigree. It's their OE technology series. Belts that are fantastic, not fantastically, fanatically engineered for perfect fit, form, and function. And Continental has an OE technology series multi-V belt for 98% of the vehicles on the road. 98%. That's a lot. Uh, you get, oh, enough surprise. Then it goes back to the surprises thing. Nope. Forget that. If you want your car to run for a long time <laughs> and not have it eat itself because you didn't have a good belt on it, that's the thing that actually happens. Get a Continental OE Series Multi-V Belt, the belt with the OE pedigree. Go to go to oetechnologyseries.com. That is better. We will change that in writing for next time. Indeed. All right. That's the show. Thank you for bearing with us. Smoking Tire Podcast. Here it is. Where did we let off, Zach? Ooh, I haven't seen you in... Well, no, I saw you over the weekend in New York, but we were last here last week. So last week's shows were both road shows. Yeah, we recorded at my house. Oh, that's right. Yeah, which, uh, because they fixed the roof. I didn't realize there was something wrong with the roof, but it was like a war zone in this bitch. Yeah, they were hammering and... Yeah, Tim was like, uh, Shit was gnarly. <laughs> shit was gnarly. <laughs> and then I did a road show with Musto from the bullet launch. Boy, the fucking bullet. People are so Upset. defensive about the fucking bullet so crazy how so bro like i just said it was dumb like the movie's 50 years old there's Agreed. this is now the third what happened to that there's now the third um this is the third bullet, bullet mustang from from ford mm-hmm. i don't know i just think it's time to come up with some new heroes maybe well okay when the bullet edition first came out the first one time they did it 2001. What did you think about it? It was the new edge Mustang, and so I thought it was dumb because they applied this design ethos to a car that didn't share the same body style as the original right. car. Then they did it in 05, and I was like, okay, I get it, because now the car looks like the car. Mm-hmm. Or not 05, though, 08 maybe, whatever it was. This, man, uh, 08. I think you're right, 08. 08 05 yeah. was like still 05 was the first. No, it wasn't. It was the first year. First, first year of first the, year because uh, yeah, was yeah, still yeah. new age because yeah. Terminator right okay so uh, then I was like oh well then it matches the body style but now it's like can we f- let it go I, mean, I don't know am I that big of a dick I think it's an age thing honestly like I bet if you're maybe sixty maybe the movie would connect more to you I, like because I agree it, it's a weird it's a really dated reference and yeah. it's clearly being used just to like grab a little bit of marketing like oh it's the new thing and, and you can get a lot of stories out of it because then. Blogs will talk about the movie, and maybe they'll put up a clip of the well, car that, chase. I mean, like, that's what has got a lot of legs. Yeah, like that's what they're hoping they'll yeah. do. It's like, but that's what they were hoping they would do every time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not. There's nothing. There's nothing new about it. You know, the only thing new is like they found the car. Yeah, I can't. I conspiracy theory brain says they probably found the car a long time ago, and then they like we just found it. This year, <laughs> and we just happened yeah. to be rolling out, you know. But I mean, the car is cool. It's it's very cool that someone had it in their collection. I think they have a lot of cars, but it w- no, it wasn't a collection. I think it was like 
the dude just had one or two cars, and the, the guy who bought it drove it for a little bit. Like, oh, after the movie. Yeah, like after the yeah, movie, the guy who bought it drove it for a little bit, and then like stashed it away. And it's I think his son, the guy's son, now has the car. Okay. But it was like sitting in his garage, and they didn't talk about it. Like it was under a cover for like twenty years. Yeah, right? he knew for what really it was. Yeah, he knew what it was the whole time and didn't talk about it. See, and that's a cool car. Uh, look, I think the the car chase. I thought the car chase was great. I didn't notice the continuity errors the first time I watched it. Bro, the more you know about it, the worse it gets. I don't like, need to by know more far, than we did this whole. It was so weird because we did this thing at the press launch that was like a film school, and now they had this guy who was a a, a Hollywood guy. Um, he was the EP on that show, Viper. Remember that show? Yes, I do. Yeah, and I was like, "What has he done? What has he done since then?" <laughs> I, don't I think he's a film school professor or some okay. kind. Um, but he did like a breakdown of the chase, and I went, "God, that just made it way worse." You know? Yeah. Was he pointing out like, "Yeah, this is you the know, same pass the, as before"? Yeah, it's the same. You know, it was revolutionary to shoot like multiple camera kind of things, right? So on the the jumping sequence, there's eight cameras, mm -hmm. and every time you, see, it's one shot. Wow. It's one. It's they. They make one pass, and they get a dozen shots out of it, and yeah, okay. For the time, it was like yeah, real. But now it's like, wow, you really milked the fuck out of that, didn't mm -hmm. you? Like, you know what I mean? So we were seeing it through and, a new lens. Right? Yeah, and this guy yeah. presented it as like compared to how they do it today, and he pulled up like a Michael Bay movie, and it's like, <laughs> dude, you know, like you're being super disingenuous. Like that's the equivalent of something else I saw. <laughs> Or do once, which was at the launch of the 2011 Mustang. They did an autocross compared to Camaros, mm -hmm. and it was like sport pack, good geared, manual transmission Mustangs against literally Camaros they'd rented from like Enterprise. Which it's like, well, that's not really, you know what I yeah. mean? And so th with this, it's like it was. It just was, you know, you're comparing what theoretically was the most groundbreaking, amazing, most realistic that was the thing right realistic chase and then you're going compared to michael bay like pull up ronin bro right what pull, are you yeah. doing pull you know that has pull up the effect. transporter pull up something that like you know exists in our universe <laughs> you know yeah totally the chase that happens in reality it's know, like uh kind. it's like if you compared a fight scene from bullet to a fight scene in what i watched infinity war on the plane which is like <laughs> yeah. it's all green screen it's like yeah. well, if you compare it to like a jason bourne movie though yeah. or a uh mission impossible which are right. like fight choreography yeah people go through windows you know you that's can't another do that. good one mission uh, like a mission impossible like motorcycle chase sequence yeah. you know what i mean like those are dope did like, you read all the stuff about the, the new mission impossible and all the driver training tom cruise did with like i know he's like obsessed with doing his own stunts so, he's so, a fucking whack job but he gets points for all I saw the hanging out of the plane thing. That you was, did that for me. That's real. fucking which is so cool. That's one of those things that I bet like just like looks really scary. But you're once you're probably comfortable with hanging on the cable, you're probably like, ah, oh, this is fun. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? But what's cool is you have to be so famous. There's a level of fame where like you're not that famous, so they'll let you do it. Then there's a big range where you're too famous to, to for the risk, and then you're so famous. And you're so famous, they have to they let have you to let do you do it. it. Yeah. But the the really crazy one was he rode a motorcycle uh, reverse traffic around the Arc de Triomphe, <laughs> and okay. so they had like forty stunt drivers mm -hmm. in cars acting as traffic just mm -hmm. practicing their moves all of the time so they just do that for like hours and hours and hours and hours and then tom was practicing on the bike for hours and hours and then finally when they shot it he rides reverse traffic but what was crazy is when the stunt coordinator wrote in the jalopnik interview uh you know and the cars would just move in a predictable way but they still had to work with tom a little bit like yeah. if he changes his line slightly or something like it, it's not like it's a perfect... Yeah, yeah, they're not you know, on tracks. They're not on tracks. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not a coordinated dance. It's like there's still a little bit of room for modification, yeah. which is amazing and nuts. So anyway, like, I, some, and I'm not, like, I understand that something can be influential and important in period, but it's like... A lot of things were, were influential fucking 50 years ago. It's like, can we... But even even if it wasn't period, I think I, you mentioned it maybe in New York, like the Transformers edition Camaro was silly. Yeah. You know, it was... It doesn't transform. It's just got a sticker and like a different color pattern, and it's just it grabbing the cachet. It doesn't like, transform. That's it. I mean, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm done there. I feel like I'm done there because it you doesn't know, do anything yeah. related to what that movie is about. Yeah, yeah. So even like you said, if they did a Fast and Furious edition, a Top Gun edition, well, that's, the car that was good. even worse. So okay, it's all right. The bullet thing, and then Steeda, which is a tuner, a, mm -hmm. a tu like tuner Mustang. company like Celine, and I've I, in the past I've had some of their products, and I've I've had, okay whatever about their products, they're fine. But um, they put out a bullet Steve McQueen edition, which is basically 
it appears uh, that it's a bullet mm -hmm. with their wheels and uh, the Roush supercharger. Okay. That pretty much is what it is, I think. Um, well, Steve McQueen had a supercharger on that first car. <laughs> he did not. No, he didn't. <laughs> but like, okay, but so I said, like, let you play that game with anything else. So like the Ford Mustang Gone in 60 Seconds Nicolas Cage edition. <laughs> sounds, it sounds it, dumb it as does. fuck. It really, and that, I think that actually, that's the crux of this whole thing is that movie is more relevant to you and I than Bullet was. And we think that using that kind of marketing is ridiculous. Yeah. So even if it was super current you know right. if the movie came out yesterday it'd be like come on i mean bro what if the new supra is coming out like what if there is all of a sudden a fast and furious one edition you know or what i mean orange paul walker supra with those wheels that looked good at the time but like pff, deep, no deep dish and the glad you know the gladiator <laughs> they would never do the gladiator but even if they just named it that it would, it would be ridiculous yeah it would be stupid now and you know who wouldn't drive it fucking paul Hundred <laughs> percent. Neither Steve McQueen nor Paul would ever drive a fucking car with their own name on it. Mm -hmm. Ever. <laughs> I guess it's just is it people like you and me where like that's kind of silly, but the mass market's like awesome. You know what? Some people fantasize about being other people. I fantasize about doing crazy shit as me. Mm. <laughs> you know, I don't need to put on a fucking costume. I don't need to drive a movie prop. I, when I had had the DeLorean, I was in no, I was so in no. You, you were probably with me at some point. Someone comes up and does some fucking eighty-eight mile an hour joke, and I'm like, mm. "Fuck you!" Yeah. You know, and like, like no one's ever said that. Yeah. You, you know what, sir? You win the keys to this you car. Were the first person. I said the first person that yeah. did it, I'd give the keys to. So, anyway, that the car drove good. Uh, yeah, drove nice. I've driven a PP one car. Like, yeah, it's, it's really good. The same, super good car. Did mag the one you drove that have mag ride? No. It's a big difference with Magnaride. Okay. Yeah, it, it is a big difference. Because I, and I, I still like the one I drove. Like in the canyons on the smooth uh, Angeles Forest. It's the, bump, like, the bumpy it's stuff that makes a difference. Over the bumpy stuff, I can, I can understand how it would, uh, it would bound a little bit. But otherwise, mm -hmm. really good car. Yeah, I did, I had a Model 3 for a week. Really interesting. Yeah, well, I, I edited the thing. Uh, oh, yeah. That, I didn't watch it yet. It looks like it hustles else? a little bit. It's not slow. No. No, it's not slow. Um, how is it? How, in the it's canyons, it's um, the video for you uh, folks watching live uh, comes out tomorrow. So you, you'll be able to watch the video. Um, and by the way, if you want to join in the show, we only have like 35 minutes of material. So we will answer <laughs> questions for as long as you guys want to get on the super chat. And uh, and we will we'll take direction for topics if you want, because I don't I don't have a ton of material today. Um, I worked on two projects this summer that I can't talk about until the promos <laughs> yeah, that's for them the, start. Yeah, that's the problem <laughs> with, with working on NBC Sports and stuff. The NBC Sports show, you can't say anything you did. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it's fun as fuck, too. Mm -hmm. like, like I want, I watched some of the uh, the studio taping uh, the other day, and like I'm not going to blow up anyone's spot, but like I heard what some of the I hadn't been following since I'm not on the show this year, but it was nice to catch up and uh, and uh, uh, they were talking about what some of the episodes were, and the Spinelli's little one is fun. Spinelli's hilarious. Spinelli, yeah. uh, obviously Spinelli, be, just being Spinelli is funny. Yeah, it's just a naturally funny thing. But I, but the little bit of taping, like prep work, I watched you guys do, and I was watching this, like, oh my god, this looks so frustrating. I'm, I'm so glad I can just go, bye, I'm leaving, and then just leave. <laughs> oh, it's an amazing process. Oh man, but I, I do kind of, I, I miss that job a little bit. That's fun. Um, I miss hang, I miss like hanging out and and bullshitting. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I totally know what you mean. Yeah, uh, so a uh, Model Three. Um, it's a really nice city car. I actually, like, when I gave it back, I kind of missed it mm. as a city car. Like, it's a really nice city car. Like, the driving position. Um, and, this, oh, there's something I think I left out of the video, actually, I didn't talk about so much, is because there are no gauges, traditional gauges, Yeah, um, you can really have the steering wheel anywhere you want. You don't have to think oh, about that. Oh, that's a very that. good point. So that that didn't occur to me until I actually drove the car. I went, oh, I thought this was so stupid, but now if you had a heads-up display, that'd be perfect. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, but it's not the, the it's not as bad. It's not that bad. Yeah, if, if you're the wrong height in cars, like if you yeah. put the wheel at the correct position for your arms, right. it may block 
30 to 80 miles an hour right so like i'm tall yeah but i have short like t-rex arms so i have to <laughs> i have the wheel really low oh jesus what a, I, i'm not used to sitting at this mic <laughs> sorry i usually sit there speaking of t-rex um, arms yeah right so i usually put the wheel really low and if in most cars if i had the wheel where it re where i really want it it blocks the top of the gauges so i sacrifice wheel position for seeing the gauges oh, okay in the tesla i could put the seat and the wheel anywhere i want and not have to think about gauges and that was really nice. And I, I front truly, visibility is very good. Yeah, it's got a really yeah. low cowl right. and a really nice greenhouse. Um, the visibility is excellent. The backup camera is the best in the industry by wow. far. You can activate it anytime you want. Like, you know, there's like shit that it's like, there's shit about the car that makes everything else seem ancient. Mm -hmm. You know, some a lot of it you found, we found in Model S as well. Um, the fact that the... I love the big map now. Do you? How, yeah. Did you drive? You drove it at night, I assume. Yeah. Can you turn it down dim enough yeah. where it's not lighting the car up? Yes. Okay. Yes, it has a night mode. It goes to dark. Okay. Yeah, and you can dim it down, and but I find that like I use ways. No, normally I use ways like all the time, right? Like if I'm going further than just you know home to the office or whatever. If I'm driving into LA, really, mm -hmm. I'm using ways, right? But I find that. When I just get that big map overview, because it's big, but yeah. it's also detailed, um, that's just the big Google Maps view, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not, I don't focus so much on individual ways turns. You know what I mean? In the city. Uh, because you, you know your general direction? Yeah, I can just okay. see like, okay, I can see I can where traffic is and I can just go, all right, go around four blocks yeah. and you know. That's very good. I found that to be really nice. Because I, I, someone messaged me today asking if why I still don't use Waze and I don't because a lot of times it would make me do left turns across mm -hmm. traffic in LA, which is impossible. They changed that. They did? Yeah. Okay. They, they, nice. There's an option. There's a settings now that will... Uh, avoid left turns across traffic. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. the UPS move. Totally, and it's in the settings. All right, <clears throat> maybe I'll maybe I'll try it again. Yeah, yeah. But um, I liked the big tablet. Um, I like the seating position. I liked that I could put a tall person behind me, um, even with my seat where it was supposed to be. It's impressive. Yeah. Um, it was definitely quick. You know, not fast. Like it dies kind of around a ninety. You know, but but. Quick, definitely quick, like scoots. You know right. what I mean? Like you want to make that quick move, like scoots. Uh, corner's pretty flat. Steering's video gamey. Okay. <clears throat> definitely video gamey. Um, but like video gamey in that as you turn it, the car moves equal just, to the just degree dis, as you just turn it. Disconnected. Disconnected, disconnected okay. steering. Um, it's good up to like six tenths. When you really start pushing it, and the road gets a little bumpy, mm -hmm. the rear end is very sloppy. Oh, it just kind of oh. it, it. The rear end kind of come, is comes it, is apart is a bad word. Bounding around or moving. It's a is lot, it there's a lot of motion. Doing the a, lot, a lot of wobble. Okay. A lot of wobble in the, at the back. And I, this is the regular Model Three, not the performance. Mm -hmm. So, um, but but that's like that's when you your driving crosses into sports car driving. It's yeah. like it, it's not for that, and do not get it for that. Yeah. Like if you find yourself having to drive on a windy road. You'll have a pretty good time at six tenths. Like it's 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 a nice experience. You know, it's smooth in, smooth out, cornering flat. Um, you know, reasonably composed chassis, but it is definitely not a sports car. Uh, and and you, when you start to push it, it's like not great. Yeah, it's not but, trying to be. But it, no, it doesn't need to be. Yeah. But I like the trunk was pretty big, and the, you know, it was the front trunk was all right. Um, it was just a, it's a very pleasant place to spend your time. You know, downsides like. Uh, my this one didn't have autopilot, so it didn't have the autopilot en en enabled. So I don't know about that one. But um, body panel gaps you saw in the video yeah. are some variety. You know, if you're not like looking or you don't care, like it didn't have a the car didn't rattle. Like it wasn't like that, right? Nothing fell off. Um, but you know, some of the panel gaps are a little wonky. Some are big. I mean, they're <laughs> frankly big. Like yeah. I remember the first time I saw a couple of Model Threes on the road around here, and I could I was on the highway next to them, and I was like, that looks like a really big gap. Right. So it's it's just a different fitment. They're hit or miss. Some of them are tight. Some of them are not. Well, right. and this was an early car, right? This car, uh, Bosey did the VIN and said it was like March it was built. So, okay. and I was like, okay, well, are they better now? And he said, the average car is a little better, but they're still kind of hit or miss. Were there any electronic problems? I know the Edmonds guys bought one. Yeah. And their list, I think Carlos wrote it up, their list of stuff that has been 
wrong is big is yeah and alex roy who has spent a lot of time with them told me some things you know i uh that that tend to go wrong or could go wrong for me not not really any issues um i didn't use the app because i got the car on turo shout mm -hmm. out to turo they hooked it up um there's a lot of model threes on turo 100 bucks a day actually wow and i was able to charge it just using the 110 outlet at my house so on the one day um I did the fast driving. I used a little bit of a little bit of out there in Malibu juice, mm -hmm. but other than that, it was only charged at my house, and I was able to get like I don't know overnight like fifty miles worth of charge. So if I was driving it less okay. than fifty miles a day, like my house was fine. That sounds um, right because when we had the Volt, it was overnight it was, that, it was forty yeah. miles. Yeah, okay. it was basically the same. It, okay. the, the Tesla charges faster than the Volt. The Volt charged it. Uh, I want to say it was like. 10 amp and the tesla charges at 12 okay it's a little faster okay um overall i really liked it so i didn't use the app so i got i used was using basically the valet key which is a, a credit card oh that's what was in the video okay yeah so the credit card key at first i was like awesome i leave it in my wallet and that's it nah you have to tap it against the B pillar to get in, and then you have to tap it against the center console to start the car. It's like a hotel. Yeah. Okay. So you have to keep. You can't. You have to keep taking it out of your pocket. And like, if that's the case, like, I'd rather fob, frankly, mm -hmm. um, because I'd be worried to keep that. I worry the card would the fall card, in my pocket. Well, it sticks to your phone. It sticks to your wallet. You know, you just pull something else out of your pocket, and, vroom, and there it goes. You know what I mean? Ooh, yeah. And Alex Roy said that Tesla owners typically use the app and then also keep the card in the wallet as a backup or okay. a valet key. Okay. Um, you know, that that's like. They can't help themselves. You know what I mean? They can't help themselves, but like... But it might not try, be better. You know, try to make... The, you don't have to improve every fucking thing. Well, do you see Johnny's post about the um, 750's key fob and how big it was? Yeah, it's like a it's like an Apple Newton. It's huge. <laughs> I mean, it's got a yeah, screen. Tim, can you, you can Google like a picture of it? the BMW M760 key fob? Um, it is Also, the sizable. Model 3, we get... There are some good angles, and there are some very froggy angles. Yeah, totally. It's a highly froggy car, and the, and the color matters too. Um, there's, I think the front, Ooh, the front the dip's so, that thing. so big. <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> you can, I know you can control a Beast lot with mode. it, but it's that like that's too big. A normal fob is good because it's got weight. You feel yeah. it in your pocket. You'll feel if it falls out. Yeah, this is crossing into smartphone territory, right. but you know you got to um, justify its existence or justify the car's cost probably. Right. But uh, so overall, Model Three. I mean, the one I drove was like fifty-three grand, so it wasn't cheap. Um, but considering the retail price of my Volt was like thirty-six, mm -hmm. I thought that this was pro was proportionally nicer. Seventeen grand more. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but like, yeah, I think so. It's 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 more stylish. Like it's better. It's better looking. Mm -hmm. It has more features. You know. Um, the radio wasn't very good. The actual sound of the radio was not very good. And you said there's only no one bass. available, right? And I don't think there's any optional stereo really? upgrades. Yeah, there was like no bass. I was actually disappointed in that. Yeah. That was the only it thing about the car bad. that I was actually like truly disappointed in. Yeah. I was, was around an Aston Martin this summer and <laughs> it had eight speakers sometimes. And sometimes it had five. <laughs> and sometimes it had four. So, well, just... Yeah. English, it's English, right? And this is a, a yeah. bespoke. You're driving a bespoke automotive manufacturer, Tesla, <laughs> you know, making very special things for only a few years. Yeah, I mean, I think the one another like I don't want to call it a knock per se because everything's a give and take, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a, a Mustang GT costs forty grand, and also a BMW 228i M Sport costs forty grand because the BMW has certain things that are nicer and the Mustang has a big fucking engine, right? right. Um, and so so it goes with this. This totally. is 53 grand. I would say that materials are about equivalent of like a upper trim Malibu. Like, okay. like a, a roughly equivalent of like what GM does at the mid-tier level. The $40,000 $35 to $40,000, yeah, leather and stuff like that, which isn't bad. It's, yeah. it's like serviceable. It's, it's not... You know, but it's definitely not, they're not assembling cars at the level that Audi is, mm -hmm. you know. Um, 
but they are expensive cars. You know, they're not they're not cheap. But there is some there's some really innovative storage solutions um, in terms of like how you there's like a phone dock, like an actual dock, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and it's like interchangeable. You know, if it's an Android or an Apple, you can get the interchangeable dongle for the That's dock good. that makes okay. it work. And like. You know the the Wi-Fi like over air updates are great and stuff like that. I mean, and and actually driving it around is a is a nice refined you know it's experience. Like, what's the um, NVH like inside? Like, how's the sound deadening? It's pretty quiet and it's pretty refined. I got a couple. If I hit a couple like hard edged bumps, there was a little bit of like thunkiness, but like. My Focus RS also does that, and I was told, like, it's definitely not broken. That's just, like, a thing that happens. So, you know, um... How would I would it compare to Volt, right? Right. Similar. Okay. Yeah, similar. It's pretty quiet. It's pretty good. There's a, there's a bit of wind noise at 70, 75, um, and there's a little tire noise, you know. Um, it's actually, you can, the tires are, like, kind of eco tires, and so they squeal, you know, in the canyons, and because the car's so so quiet you can actually breathe that you you don't feel what the tires are doing you hear what the tires are doing that's what uh um, could you hear it in the video at oh all? yeah oh you could yeah, yeah you okay, can cool. hear the shh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what the road and track guys said in their article you know they took two to the track and did tr- testing yeah, yeah and they one of the strong comments was i've never been able to hear so much feedback from the tires before, right but right. because i could that was like a new input you know, while driving on the track. Yeah, I read that. That was their performance review, right? Yeah. Yeah. That looked really interesting because I loved, one of the things I really liked about Tesla, all Teslas especially, uh, but, but, but Model 3 especially, is how much you can really drive with just the gas pedal. You know, it's like there's manual three pedal cars, then there's, you know, paddle shifter, there's fully automatic. It's like, what else can you actually eliminate but still have a good driving experience? Mm -hmm. And, and regenerative braking is that other thing. And so ninety um, percent of the time, not in the canyons, but like in regular driving, I would only touch the brake pedal for between like four and zero miles an hour. So any other time it's just a lift and the car slows down with like a That's totally cool. adequate sort of braking pressure. And you can dial that out. If you don't, if you want to coast more, you dial it out. That's cool because it's it's like when you drive in second gear yeah. in, a, in most cars you know, you, it revs up quick and then it slows down quick, yeah. but you then don't have the legs above 40 miles an hour. But right. this gives you it up does to it all, it does it all the time. and then yeah. also slows down. Yeah. That's and then it fun. also has this, the chill mode, which I hate that it's called chill. It's so mm-hmm. fucking cheeky, but like, um, you know, it dumbs down the throttle response. It only plays channel 53 <laughs> on XM. <laughs> only chill. Um, and uh, yeah, it dumbs down the throttle, which for the city is nice. If you go flat, you still get flat, but it doesn't make it. It doesn't. Yeah, it's not as jerky. Okay. It's I nice. like that it's a lot. A, it's a nice car. Like It really shows like a ton of promise. That's a lot of smart stuff. They just have to figure out how to screw it together a little better. Yeah. I, I like, like their mission, and I I like those features that they're doing. It's just they have, yeah. you know, they have the problems that they have. Yeah, and Alex said they um they take you know they take people's criticisms and, and improvement ideas very seriously, and where they can. And Alex originally complained. Apparently, the the autopilot controls originally were on the touchscreen, which is yes. awful. That's just like I don't know how that got through. That's just bad. Everything but, on the screen. But apparently, Alex and a few others really criticized and offered better ways. And now they're on the steering wheel, and a, and he said that made a, a really really big they difference. use like the, the scroll buttons they have right yeah so there are two scroll buttons on, and they're like a universal scroll buttons and if i had one knock against them it's that there doesn't seem to be a clear indicator on the car of what is what they're on at this very moment okay. so you know you might at one point want to change the volume and end up doing something completely different and end up setting autopilot and end up doing something else right so so i do wish there was like a yeah, you know, some other type of little indicator that that showed me like what this is programmed to at this very moment. But yeah, so they they change depending on what mode you're in. I think I think Mercedes has my favorite cruise control like in the business right now. It's the little stock. The little stock, and yeah. it's and it makes sense. It's like forward for more speed, back for less. Up is mm-hmm. set down because sometimes I've gotten them where they seem backwards. Where like McLarens, I had to like look at the diagram <laughs> and then experiment, and then I'm like, wait, this doesn't. Oh, down is down is set. That's strange. And then back is. Cl- I don't know. It was very weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, in what the 720? Yeah, love the 720. Oh my god, 720. What is that thing? That's so good. 
Someone just was emailing me and asking about like what car they should buy for three hundred grand, and I really that's a real email I get from people. What should I buy for three hundred grand? We got that that guy posted uh, super chat <laughs> twice. Remember? Yeah, yeah, his budget was three hundred. Yeah. I th- uh, oh, his was yes. Yeah, I think three hundred grand. Yeah. Buy that. Well, he yeah for oh. that you get you get for three hundred grand you definitely get a seven twenty S right yes, now. Yes, yeah. you do. Yeah. It's it's it's, it's 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 the best at everything. It's like the new Turbo S with a little bit less cabin space. For, cause there's for no a mid-engine seat. car, it is so comfortable. The yeah, oh, seating absolutely. position is perfect. For a sing- for two people, yeah. the, I mean, the S can kind of hold four, or the, sorry, the Turbo can kind of hold four people, <laughs> uh, but it's got <laughs> no, a the, great the, greenhouse. The, the, tur- the 911s can hold two people very luxuriously. Yeah. This is like supercar luxury, but still like... I can sit straight up in that car, which is yeah. a big fucking thing. It's roomy and it's fast yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. so comfortable. Yeah. That's very good. I want to hear one with a sport exhaust. I've never heard one with a Yeah, the one we or... drove was the you drove the gray one, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Was, that one didn't have have the sport exhaust. No. It's louder. I mean, for sure, it's louder. Um it was definitely more like present? Is that the word? You mean instead of volume wise, it's just Yeah, present? like I I pull one pulled up next to me at a light the other day that had sport exhaust okay. and it was it was just like like a, a level louder all the time like the gotcha. tone was exactly the same okay. it was just more volume it's still kind of like a it's like an angry moan kind of thing i don't yeah. know it's just jet fighter Have i think seen, they sound better in the car than they sound going by sound like race cars in the car in it the sound, car they yeah. sound like race car and outside the car they sound nice but it's more it's kind of a it's very robotic, I think. Yeah, it's uh, a high power drill of some yeah. kind. It's just very precise, but it's like almost like the cylinders are firing so close together and so quickly that they just talk over each other. Yeah, it's it's like not it's not that dramatic no. outside, but inside it's dramatic. Inside it's crazy because inside you're going for the ride and it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, have you seen VF engine or not? Uh, yeah, VF has put up some videos lately of a 720 that they put the, like their exhaust tune on. And oh, it's just really? Shooting fire like on the highway. I love that shit. <laughs> it's awesome. I don't, I don't know. It's so nice. The fire is just my favorite. It looks That's pretty my cool. Fucking favorite. 720 is so good. Um, uh, how did so, we get there? Huh? How did we get know. there? I don't know. Uh, um, three se- oh, three series. So is sh- size of a Civic? Series. Sorry. Oh, Model, Model 3? Three. Is it size of a Civic? It's like a fancy mm. Civic. It's electric. Hmm. Like a new Civic, you know the uh, new maybe, super now that you, Civic. Now that you mention it, maybe here, you know what? So they couldn't just shrink down a Model Three because the greenhouse would have gotten too small. You mean S, but yeah. I'm sorry, S. They should couldn't shrink down an S. So it's it seems like they left the Model S's greenhouse alone and then shrunk the body or kind funny. of around it, so which is sort of uh is sort of funny. Oh look at that! He found it. Civic versus Model Three. Wow. Is that? We don't Are they know about the same? We don't know if one zoomed in. That's yeah, true. I don't know about the <laughs> scale. <laughs> it's just, that's funny. Fake it's news. Fake they're news. Exactly the shot. Shot. Fake news. I can make a Raptor look the same size as a uh, Suzuki. Yeah. Bro, on Instagram, way. I can make a fucking Rolex Submariner look the size of a Tesla Model Three. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see a cock look like it's ten inches? <laughs> um, read Donald Trump's DMs. What? Um, uh, <laughs> sliding in. Oh my god! This morning, six six o'clock in the morning, my Uber to the airport. What kind of fucking Uber driver wants to be chatty at six a.m.? I don't know. But I had a very vocal Trump supporter Uber driver this morning. I didn't say shit. I didn't say shit. I wanted to be silent, but he had the radio on, talking about whatever fucking crazy thing happened today. I can't even. Who can even keep track of it? Right. Um, he went from that, and then he goes, "You want to hear a couple jokes about lawyers?" I was like, oh my. F-. And then he told, he started going, to look, lawyers are jokes. <laughs> had, he, had he been driving all night Fucking and he was like, three I just, star motherfucker. You're the, last, you're the last person and I'm just going to talk to you and then each, drive home. Each of those infractions was a minus one star. <laughs> <laughs> I told a lawyer joke to my dad's best friend the first time I met him when I was eight. And he goes, you know what I do for a living? I go, what? And he's like, I'm a lawyer. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm going to die now. He didn't find that funny then? He didn't oh, he thought it was hilarious. Oh, okay, and cool. then he was like, by the way, do you know what I do for a living? I was like, no, yeah. I'm seven. <laughs> do, you re- do you remember the joke though? Yeah, it was the classic, what do you call a thousand lawyers at the bottom, bottom of the ocean? Of the ocean. Good, Good start. start. Yeah. Yeah, he laughed and then said, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> 
I don't. I, I only started on the Uber driver thing because he was driving a fucking Civic, and I just kept looking at the picture of the Civic and seething about it. They're so spacious. I rode in an they Altima are. from New York. My uh, my Lyft driver was a former chemical engineer. The guy was like seventy. Drove and he drove like it too. Uh, but we talked about space and the. Um, what am I trying to say? That sun... Uh, solar eclipse? No, 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 the solar probe they're sending out that oh, they launched yeah. like two days ago and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, so he's a pretty interesting dude. But we both had the same amount of information about a bunch of things, which is only like 5% of what you really need. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it was seeing Did myself Did you at least the acknowledge future. that? That's how I feel like most arguments are, except no one acknowledges that. I didn't acknowledge it because we were both... We were we were peas in a pod. We That's both went, so have you heard of this? He's like, I have. What's it like? And I was like, here's the sentence I know. And he was like, that reminds me of this thing. And it was just the whole way to the airport. None of us knew, neither of us knew shit. Jesus, they really need to integrate the don't talk to me function. Mm, that's they called really, getting with ease on. I know. I just need to put headphones on. Mm -hmm. I, I've done the, I've pretended to be on phone calls before. Uh, I can't believe idea. I've done that, but I have. Stinks. I would rather talk to myself it's than talk to you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. The effort to talk to yourself for at least two minutes, make up a conversation. I, you know what I should do goodbye. next time is I should just pull out my phone and be like, I'm going to record a podcast real quick. Just yeah. start recording a podcast in the back of a fucking Uber. You could do that. Jesus. Do you see that the Uber and fucking Lyft are like kicking, using the government to kick Bird out of Santa Monica? They're going to be no, the I, birds. They're yeah. going to be. Yeah. I yeah. saw your tweets, but I didn't understand what you meant. It wasn't. I. I, I look, I I was, was following along in the news and, and from the guy who uh, apparently is an investor in that. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not necessarily pro or anti Bird. I'm anti the, the madness that's happening in front of my house right now. That doesn't mean I want the whole thing to go away. But like. Bird fucked up by starting in Santa Monica, which from the very beginning has been fully hostile towards them. Mm. They are not about what the fuck is going on with these scooters. And the rest of Los Angeles does not seem to give a fuck. And so um, Santa Monica, because it's not part of Los Angeles, is able to make their own laws. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they have decided, I guess they did an RFP, Request for Proposal, um, and Bur Bird and uh, Lime and a couple other smaller companies and Lyft like and Uber. Yeah, yeah, all put in proposals and they chose Uber and Lyft and not Bird or Lime. So Uber and Lyft are going to do the same scooter thing, but they're going to have the their exclusive, name. yeah, e scooter wow. business in Santa Monica. Now, I think part of it is vindictive against bird because they they got in trouble for not having a business license like right. they started pretty fucking amateurish you know still pretty amateurish but like they really tried to fake it till you make it like no no we're allowed to be here and they just existed and, right but then once the things start getting strewn around and, and also like right but like uber like was like scooters. the disruptor and now they're the establishment and you basically are you know you know you're taking this new thing and handing the contract to the establishment yeah um which here, the one, the, I think Santa Monica is missing out, I think, because they could be employing a lot of people in Santa Monica. Like, they could, really could. Like, that, that could be a huge company. They could end up being a, a big... If the city was supporting them, they could employ a lot of people there. Yeah, true. Tim, as a Santa Monica resident, do you have a... You seem to be in tune with fucking what happens in Santa Monica. Do I have a what? An opinion on the matter, or... Um, uh, I very much enjoy riding them, but I hate seeing that fucking litter all over the street all the time. And just dropping mm. them everywhere. I have no preference between any of the different versions. Lime yeah. seems to go up the hills a little bit better. I think the lime's a little Conundrum. faster, right? Yeah, a couple, <clears throat> couple mile an hour. I don't, like I see around my neighborhood, I, see around, I don't mind seeing them when they're upright because it's like, oh, someone parked this here. Yeah. But yeah. when I see it with like paint on it or it's on the ground or if it starts to look strewn about, yeah. then it's like now we're, you clean up after yourself. Yeah. Like that kind of thing. Well, I, you're trusting grime you know we know people are grimy as fuck yeah but, uh, <laughs> no, no, people are always, yeah <laughs> but know? then but then they keep talking about bird nests or you know docking stations for these yeah, things but yeah, half yeah. the appeal of the thing is go to where you want to go and drop it off right? right you know very true that'll get rid of, I, I wonder if see what's funny about uber is <clears throat> uber has been in debt like since they launched like they're not a profitable company they just keep raising investor capital so they may have 
heard whatever Santa Monica's complaints were and yeah. gone, we can do it all better. Don't worry, we'll do it. But they may not have actually done the math on how much that's going to cost to yeah. fix whatever problems they are and it might just drive them further into debt. Well, the the bird investors angle was that you could be employing people in Santa Monica and this business was born here and you're really handing it over to the establishment, et cetera, like I just said. Mm -hmm. And then there's another argument that was these young ass companies didn't do a good job presenting their case to the city and Uber and Lyft that now exist in countries all over the world probably know how to appeal to a fucking government a little better, which yeah. is an excellent point. It's yeah, an excellent totally. point. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if they couldn't write a proposal for shit. They didn't even have a business license six months ago. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So like, you know, there's there is definitely that that's a hundred percent the other side of it too. You know? But that's I would true. And I, I would think helmets give, are bullshit. <laughs> You think, well, well, I'm a fucking grown man. I don't have to wear a helmet to go 15 miles an hour on a on a scooter. True, because you can skateboard faster than that. Right. Or ride a bike or whatever. I think, or, do you have to wear a bike helmet in They in certainly California? don't. They don't enforce it. No, I think, I think if under you're 16 under, or under 16 or, 16 or, or under yeah. a certain age, you're supposed to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In no, Santa Monica, they're, I mean, what they were doing was giving people helmet tickets. No yeah. way. On birds, like expensive helmet tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two hundred dollars. They were like, yeah. they would stand on the, on the road and like, like roadblocks, like, uh, gum, like gumball. Okay. <laughs> and so, appar <laughs> apparently, if you're riding on the bike path, that's a thousand dollars. Yeah. Some that's somebody told this fucked. is anecdotal. I didn't yeah, read okay. it. You know, but that's way the too he much. The hearing there was a hearing about it today. Jeez, that's expensive. I mean, that was, that was like, we're mad about this. How can we get attention from Bird? What if we write everybody tickets? Yeah. Like, that'll, that'll hurt him. Yikes. Yeah. That sucks. So Bird, they, mm. the, they, they blacked out the map in Santa Monica. Ain't no wow. birds in Santa Monica. When did that happen? That's why they're in Culver Yesterday, City now. Two days ago? Really? Yeah. I saw, I've started seeing more of them oh, in Culver I, City. Oh, I wonder if they picked up their Santa Monica business and went to Culver they City. Sure that would be a good idea. Did. That'd be a really good idea. They got yeah. all those bike paths on Venice and shit now. Yeah. Sorry. Beverly Hills shut them out a long time. For our global now. audience, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're, we just had, we're doing 20 minutes on Los Angeles. But I feel like these scooters. They're going to go th this is They're going to be in other they're places. Go this is this. If this story doesn't apply to your city now, odds are it may at some point. I mean, it takes the. Uh, the freedom of walking and the convenience of Uber and Lyft and combines them. Really. Yeah, like go go door to door literally, but you don't need you don't need a whole car. Yeah, like you don't want to walk because you're lazy and you're not going to bicycle. That's just what it is. <laughs> yeah. Like you get a bicycle and do the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. this is just zip zip. Sometimes I don't want to be sweaty when I get there. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah, I saw a guy ride one in a suit and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm not going to bike in a suit. Well, I think in a lot of other cities, like I happen to live, I live like basically in fucking Times Square. So from my experience with tourists and these things is completely different than someone who lives in a normal place and people are using them for everyday shit mm -hmm. not for being dumb fuck tourists yeah everyone everyone likes to rent them in venice and like cruise and instagram bro and, all that stuff, and, yeah. and which is fine okay but it's like you know they're on the bike path they're on the street they're on the sidewalk like everywhere you go you have to be careful because someone could be like mobbing on one of these things like both directions, you know. There's no rules of traffic. There's you no. You should be on the sidewalk. It should be like a bicycle, which yeah. is supposed to be in the bike lane, which is a vehicle. Yeah, yeah. So because it's, it's 15 it's, miles an hour, like that's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's crazy. But and that's um, what Santa Monica said: bike path, bike path only. No yeah. Sidewalk, no, no beach bike path. I agree. Yeah, with that. Yeah. When he says bike, he means street bike paths, not not the beach bike path. Yeah. What about the, the green painted? Well, there's a beach bike path that's only for walking, and then one that is quote no, no, only the for one biking. for bicycles. Yeah, yeah, they no, can't be there. No, no. really. Yeah, <laughs> that's weird. That, no bueno. I think I think that's dumb, but it's the reason they can't be there is because people are leaving them on there and like block, you know, leaving them like horizontal and blocking like half half the bike. That's because people are shitty. Yeah, and people there should are be shitty. a wintertime rule. There should be a summertime rule and a wintertime. <laughs> that's rule. true. Like yeah, dogs, like dogs call. on the beach. Yeah. You can't have a dog on the beach in the summer, but you can in the winter. Really? Like that? Yeah. Oh, they I didn't just know don't give a fuck. Yeah. Anyway. Or they just don't care. Yeah. You can't have, you can't throw fucking frisbees and shit on the beach in the summer, but you can in the winter. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's the most <laughs> California summertime activity you can I know, think right? of based on like Archie comics? Yeah. It's well, if you, I mean, if you if you go to some of the beaches, the density of the beaches, I agree. You, you know, it's really. But yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how much they enforce that shit. I've been to the beach the this summer. Rule. I've seen frisbee. But it, there's so much space before you get to the water. Yeah, like yeah. People don't throw frisbee where everyone are. They throw them like I think it's a technical, a technical rule. Jeez. All right. Let's find something else to talk about. we got That's some Super Chat questions. questions. If you want to fucking talk cars with us right now, well, so speaking we're live of in the Super Chat. The, oh, you, the Model 3, you have to save money where you can. <laughs> so today I drove a 2018 Charger SRT 392. Yeah. Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like it's fifty. The guy he bought it for like fifty one grand. It's got it's got mag ride. Not, it's probably you know, very not nice. It is. Yeah, it's, it's a cheap AMG. So nice. But where are they going to save the money to give you an AMG experience? The interior. Yeah. Like the interior is not. It's functional. It's yeah. got everything you want, but it's not it's got nice cool to seats, look at. Right? Cool seats, heated seats, yeah, heated steering wheel. The, the seats I like are the good. Gauges. Those, yeah. The seats are good. Yeah. Um, it handles well. Like it yeah. sticks. It rides really flat. But you've got that giant wall, that single piece dashboard yeah. that is incredibly uneventful. <laughs> and then you've got. I mean, this, the the UConnect screen works really well, but it's just there. UConnect's you know? a pretty solid system. It as is far it's as quick. factory systems go. And their yeah, stereo is usually rock. Yeah. They're, I like the Chargers. Fuck yeah, me too. They're, they're, me they're too. really stable and easy to drive, and they're mm-hmm. fun. They drive lighter than they are. Yeah. They're pretty nimble. I like them a lot. It's 4,500 pounds, and it it probably, it felt like 39, yeah. <laughs> which is, uh, you know, yeah. like as we're going through these corners, I'm like, this thing's staying flat, but and they're it's not, got grip. The Challengers but, are bouncy. These aren't, the Chargers aren't so bouncy. Uh, when it was in track mode, it was too bouncy was in the canyons, it? but okay. when it went to sport, it was a lot better. Okay. I, Musto was telling me about his demon mm-hmm. and said that the demon, when you put it in like normal mode, because it's really not meant to go around corners, yeah. that it actually rides properly, unlike the Hellcats, which is like fucking bouncy, 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 bouncy. Yeah, because they're trying um, to be a track car. Yeah, yeah. The demon's really soft in the back that, for yeah. drag racing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's strange. I've never been in one. I haven't um, either. He said. I. He said. Uh, he's got it up in San Francisco. He yeah. said next time I come up north, I can borrow it for a few days and fuck around. Yeah, you should. I should. I, I'm. I'm casually interested in one of them. Totally. I have a fucking. Uh, I got a Veloster, right now. Oh the right. R yeah, spec. It's I just got it today, so okay. I don't know. It's so far, it's not gone well. Ooh. I really was like hoping that I could try a cheap car <laughs> that it would be like good and stuff but there's some stuff that's just way off on it well did you drive the Civic Si at all no okay. it was just the Type R because they're similar price so right I'm curious, so what are the things you don't like about the so the worst the most egregious thing I've found the smell of Jeff Bridges <laughs> what he does the Jeff? voices for Hyundai <laughs> No, I didn't realize that. The dude does, yeah. I didn't realize that. I hadn't paid attention. But so my feet are big, but not that big. Like I wear a size 11 and a half. Mm -hmm. And when I move my left foot from the clutch to the dead pedal, Mm -hmm. there is a big fucking ECU right above that space in between the clutch with two huge gauge wires coming out of it. That are they're like stiff, like they're they're like that heat treat shrunk wrap stiff. Yeah, there's nowhere to move them out of the way, and and it's like it's like hitting it's like this it's like hitting this post. So my foot comes off and goes uh, uh, and hits oh, it. Oh, so you have to go under it. I have to. It's d- did nobody with a reasonably large foot ever drive this car in development? I'm talking every single time. It makes no sense. How big are your feet? Uh, ten and a half. Okay, Tim, what size shoe do you wear? About nine and a half. Great. After this show, we're all going to go down to that fucking car. Yeah. And we're going to see what the biggest size shoe is that you can wear if you have any intention of buying one of these things. Because I assure you, if you have an 11 and a half, you can't drive this car. They did the launch for it, I think, in Germany. <clears throat> but it was just who developed did, it, though. So this is the R spec, and I think right. there's like an N spec that just came out that isn't here yet. Oh, that's what I'm confusing with. Yeah. I, Which I, I guess I is a little, yeah. fa- I guess is faster. So uh, that's the bad news. Okay. The good news is the new interior is designed nicely and the layout is good. Um, it's hard plastic, but at least it's designed well. Mm-hmm. Seats are pretty comfortable and the shifter is like a tight short shifter. I remember the shifter being very rubbery and sloppy before. It's like a tight short shifter. And it's like not slow. I don't know what the horsepower is, but like yeah, that that or, super orange color is the color I have. This one, yeah. And that's the, that might be the exact car I've got. Um, but um, I, I you know I was I'm I was optimistic because everyone was like, oh, it's better, it's better. I I didn't like the the uh, Veloster. The NA Veloster was horrible. The Turbo one was better in terms of it was faster and it. It handled better, but it was like all the controls were like a little rubbery and nummy compared to like even a GTI, which is very light controls, mm-hmm. and certainly compared to the Fords. Um, this one's got this sort of like rubber bandy steering. It's like very like front wheel drivey, non LSD steering. Progressive rack feeling? Like, do you mean rubber bandy and it gets harder the more you turn yeah, it? So yeah. it's progressive rack yeah. speed? Okay. 
Um, 201 horsepower. Yeah, two. What does it weigh? Do you see this in the specs there? Does it say curb 29, weight? 2921. So it's not heavy. No. That's, it's it's sort of it's like a Fiesta a ST competitor. SI. That's like the same Civic SI. Yeah, or Fiesta ST. I, so how did it feel I, compared? F- Fiesta for me so far, it's just it's I've only I haven't been up in the canyons. I just drove to my house in here, and so far I'm I'm Team Fiesta ST still. I haven't driven the three cylinder yet, the new one. What what about the way this drives? Uh, you know, why do you prefer the Fiesta ST? And talk for a minute. Well, so the computer died. Okay, so the pedals are where, is the starter. The Fiesta ST has a better um, how whatever it is with the front differential is better. Um, it doesn't torque steer so much. Um, let's see, it uh, has better seats. Oh, this thing has um, at least the driver's side door. I don't know if the passenger side door is different, but this is a short car with long doors. And the longer the doors are, the farther you have to park away from stuff. Yep. So like in our parking lot here at the office, I couldn't actually open the door like that far. Like, and I wasn't like, you know, right up against the car next to me. I think I was in the middle of the spot. And I I have had the same problem with the BMW M4, which has very long doors. Mm-hmm. Um, what, the, what else did I drive? This, that is had a three, fucking, this is a three door, right? It's a three door. Yeah. What else did I drive that had long doors? Like. I mean, I'm sure like an S60, the Merce- like anything. Yeah, any big no, but the Mercedes has the, the the funky hinge. Oh, so they've got a, a hinge. hinge. They've got a clever hinge that deals with it better. the The biggest defender in my recollection is the M4, which has giant fucking doors. Because it's because it, it's meant to be well, not meant to be. It can be a sedan also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's got to be able to fit two doors. It makes a big open. difference when you're parking it in in tight spaces. Yeah, yeah. So I that I thought that was annoying. Um, it actually makes a decent sound in sport mode. I'll give them that. Um, and the brake pedal is kind of soft, but I don't know. We'll have to actually try driving it, but we're going to have to, after the show, go outside and see where at what point your foot stops hitting that thing because that's like, I, I, I cannot believe that they would let a car out like that. Like, you look at it because you look at it and it doesn't even look like there could be room. Like, it's not yeah. like this is an errant placement of this thing. Like, all this shit is secured there. I wonder if they did some weird market research where they're like, how often do you use the dead pedal? You know, because if it's it's not every time you're shifting, it's like when you get on the thing, but it, you're only on the highway. It's a lot. Know, but you yeah. use it a lot. Anytime you're <laughs> you commuting, use you it do. a lot. Yeah. It's really Trust nice when me, you have one. you use it a lot. It's crazy. All right. Sorry. We'll get into the super chat stuff. Let's yeah, yeah. see. After, um, I'm, I'm at a weird angle to read these today. After driving 991.2 GT3T. Which GT3 prefer T- or Touring. better long-term car, 9972 GT3 RS or GT3 Touring? These are two amazing cars. The real difference between the older car and the newer car is the new Touring is going to ride a little softer, and the old car is going to be a little stiffer. The new car has got 70 extra horsepower, but it's also uh, bigger. You know, the, the, the new 911s aren't big cars, but... I am highly partial to the size of a 997. Mm-hmm. I think that's the perfect sized 911. The new ones are this, they're the same length as a Corvette, if yeah. I remember, which is yeah. longer than you think until yeah. you see them next to you. They go, oh, shit, that's a big car. Yeah, with the rear steer and everything, they really shrink around you when you start to go fast. They, do. they don't feel like fat, big cars, but the extra size of the newer cars doesn't necessarily translate to more like usable space in the driver's seat like the old the 997s are still very roomy cars so i prefer the size of that car but it may it may vary it's personal preference two awesome cars both awesome cars yeah. before bef- you know that 9972 rs is one of the one of the best cars i've ever driven fucking rock that car and uh, someone, lee keen really liked the front what did he, he drove a 991 gt3 and he said the the way the front axle turns in is like one of the best it's it's got yeah. such amazing front grip compared, yeah. to, compared to past generations of porsches well they so really pushed it shit. pushed it outwards and it's got some it's got wider front tires now i mean okay. i think i think it's got an extra 20 millimeter from the 997 it's got That's a lot more front tire yeah, yeah all right uh let's see i wouldn't want to buy a used car from florida i mean I'd never say never but florida is the title washing capital of america it's got to be really, like, when I was looking at 240s, there were a million for sale there, and they would say one thing and be another thing. There were, like, VIN strangeness, engine swaps, malt, like, different colored body panels, and then even the ones that had, that looked really clean. You had to, like, you'd look into the ad, and you'd notice something that was suspicious, like, engines or something else, or that doesn't look quite right. I don't know. You just, you just need to be more diligent with your inspection than you might from somewhere else, because... They can register so many things there. Yeah, I mean, I certainly wouldn't buy a car from Florida if you're not there. 
to yeah. see it. You know what I mean? Don't don't buy some shit like and not a skyline or anything like that. Yeah, like, have uh, someone inspect it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, at least it's not like Jersey, according to Jeff, has the same lax laws Florida has, plus you get like salt roads and more uh, salt water in the air. Never so that would be, that's the worst one. No. Especially not from Rob Ferretti. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'd buy a Ferretti car. Uh, Ferretti cars. Ferretti car, so if it's a car he drives. One he owned, yes. If it's a car, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah not a rental <laughs> car, no. If it's a car he drives, definitely, yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, the Model 3 Performance has hit 3.3 to 60 and just ran an 11.78 quarter mile. That's good. Do you think any German competitors will beat it around a track? Yeah. Yeah. Four definitely. Laps. <laughs> yeah. On lap. Yeah. On lap five. On lap four. Yeah. Um, and also, if if the uh, if there's any straights that go over or like 110. Yeah. I mean, you got to understand that um, that uh, an electric car at a track like Road America or Road Atlanta has almost no chance. Um, you know, uh, a Corvette. Um, let's call it. Let's you know, a Corvette or an M3 is easily going to hit 155 on the back straight at road atlanta that's like a 30 mile an hour gap on what you'll get in a tesla even a p100d like it's just not going to happen those cars die at a buck 20 so wow. any high speed circuit if we're talking a tight track around lime rock yeah a tesla model 3 could probably beat an m3 around lime rock really model 3 against like m2 be because that's a good price i mean i think it would i think price. it could be it could be close Ooh, in a, tr in a track where speeds don't exceed 110 120 miles an hour like a tighter track whether you're talking about like maybe a summit point or maybe a uh um you know a lime rock or an older east coast track. streets of willow maybe, maybe. yeah maybe i mean okay. yeah it's possible but again on lap on lap two not on lap 10 or 12 right um That'd be a and fun test. From based on, I don't know about the performance. Based on the Model Three, the regular Model Three I drove, uh, a BMW 230i M Sport would house that around a racetrack, for sure. Yeah, and just in suspension okay. geometries and brakes and stuff alone. And they have stickier tires. Well, the performance comes with better tires. The performance is going to be yeah. different, and I I, yeah. I want to clearly acknowledge that yeah. they're not the same car. But a lot of people thought the Model Three out of the box was going to be some crazy sports car and like it handles well for what it is but it's truly a six tenths car it is not a ten tenths car mm. uh, blah, 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 blah. what else we got top cost aside god so many porsche questions cost aside 987 cayman with a stick or early 981 came with pdk i mean i don't know dude where do you where do you live what do you want to do yeah where do you live what do you, i mean the newer car is better the 981 mm -hmm. car is better in all the ways so porsche's, there porsche's naming system makes no sense it's like 981 yeah. is a smaller number but it's a newer car but it's a newer car yeah i don't i there's i have no nostalgia at all for like the first gen caymans or boxsters like the newest ones are the best ones i think i that, think, I think they, the new i think the newest one is not as good looking as the last generation that generation is better looking than the first one so that gts i drove did you drive that yellow car too um, I didn't drive your. I briefly drove one I at, at a shoot. You did, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said you liked it, but not the sound, right? Yep. Yeah. So, I I kind of did like the sound in its own way. I thought it was neat. I had this with the sport exhost. I thought it in sounded the car cool. is better than outside. The car. Yeah, it's not that loud outside. It's louder inside. Yeah, I hear because yeah. it's like, yeah, it's like Subaru y quote, but more beetly. I think it's more like a Ducati. I think it sounds. I know Ducati's a V twin, but I think it, dude, it revs really fast. Yeah, it does. It's like real, like a. There's no. Court Crawford would kill to be able to build an engine that revved as fast as that. Yeah, the, no, the not to not Court, fast. but like there's no Subaru that revs like that, and you know what I mean. Even the rally cars like don't. Like this thing is like snappy like a bike. No, the engine, love. the whole car is yeah. very impressive. It yeah. was just when it was being driven on the track when I was standing outside of it. Yeah. I went, Okay, I love Subaru. That sounds worse than a Subaru. It sounds more like VW Beetle from the 60s. It sounds a little bit more, I don't know, like that. Yeah, I, it, it's not the best sounding car from the outside, but I think it sounds nice on the inside. Yeah, it does, and it fucking And goes. it hustles. It, really it hustles. Goes, yeah. I mean, I took Steinman out. You know, we did the back-to-back, -back, right? And mm -hmm. even Steinman was like, damn, this shit is fucking boogies. Torque is good. Yeah. Torque is a good thing. Torque you know, is if, good. If you want to save money, you can get a last-gen Cayman S. Yeah, but that new front, the new stuff, front bumper is no bueno. 
the front bumper on the GTS. Can you go back in my Instagram, Tim? I think there's a picture of the GTS. You might be able to see the front bumper. I think you got to scroll back a couple weeks. Um, but the front bumper is, is not as good. Oh, um, yeah, it's still not loading. What the fuck is up reason. with our internet? Hmm. I think it's the gram, dude. Everything else is working. It's just Instagram? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, you, you just have this big, big black rectangle across the whole front. That's not yeah, it, yeah. I don't, I don't like what they've done with the front bumper, but I don't, ha- I don't have a nostalgia for the older, um, the old, like the certainly not for the first gens compared to the second. No, gens. they've gotten a lot better yeah, looking, yeah. and I think they'll, st- I think the the design of this one and the last one will stay relevant for longer. It was so I drove real fast. I drove an SVT Contra today. Oh, is it? Tell me everything. I, chassis's good. Yeah, it's like it's got good suspension geometry. It has. Was it uh, modified? It was slightly modified. It had like Euro springs and dampers, which it needed because some of the complaints I read from original were that it would kind of porpoise on the bumps a little bit. And it doesn't set very well. Like this leaned. It's the six, right? But, the yeah, twenty four two point five V six. It's like two hundred horsepower. Yeah. Um, it felt like two hundred horsepower. <laughs> like it wasn't the fastest thing, and the power band's real narrow. It's like forty five to sixty two. Okay. And that's a six speed. Uh, five, five speed. speed? Yeah. Okay. Five speed. Um. I'll get that picture with it with it rolling and in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at see, that. That's, at the time, not a bad looking car. Actually, I kind of liked these at the time. I did too. But it so it, re- it reminded oh. me of what they used to be able to do with um, manufacturing, like the shapes of cars at this time. They they had two options. Like, do you want them round or do you want them square? <laughs> you know, like trucks were square yeah. as fuck, yeah, and yeah. everything else was round <laughs> as fuck. That's and when you look cool. at the outside and the inside, you see what they could work with, like hard plastic everywhere, or yeah. or like the soft rubber that was, or like leatherette. Uh, it's yeah, what it leatherette like. with padding behind it. Leatherette with yeah, padding yeah, behind yeah. it were like the nice. And things. the soft, the the even the plastic had the rubberized texture. It did, but it's yeah. but nowadays they have the soft touch plastic that like feels thicker yeah and this the whole center console was really thin clack tick 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 plastic yeah. you just when you, when, you can, when you can just like oh it was like that yeah, yeah where it said contra was yeah. um <laughs> it was it, it uh kind of reminded me of a fiesta st in the sense that when you lifted throttle mid corner uh-huh. you felt the back kind of going hey, oh. you wanna you, you wanna, wanna play you wanna play a little bit like Really neutral handling. Did it have like Not 90s quick. steering or did it have yeah. sharp steering? No, it had 90s steering. Mm, and and his, um, this guy had gone through and done some of the bushings, but the steering rack felt like it needed to be replaced or uh-huh. gone through because it had a little bit of a shutter going through it really not communicative through it at all. And it's a progressive rack. So it had like a <laughs> bunch of strikes against it. But I think right when I finished, I was like, you know, this is pretty cool. Like the platform seems good. I know the suspension geometry is like uh, multi-link. It's got, yeah. you know, it um, went under compression. It actually tows out. So what, it kind of acts uh, as rear steer. What year was it? 98. Tim, can you Google a picture of a 98 Ford Mondeo from Europe? I forget if it was, if the contour was exactly the same or, or very similar. They got, I guess Europe got better springs and dampers. Um, yeah, is that oh, the, same? the same? Looks the same. Well, the front's the same. Front is it's pretty, front it's pretty the, the same. same. It's pretty close. I don't know if it's exactly the same. Full Mondeo. Is that exactly the same? Tail lights are the front different, is exactly I believe. The, same. <coughs> uh, the back the, is different. But So I was like, oh, this seems like a good chassis. The guy got it for a thousand bucks. Like if you, oh, want, a, you want a cheap front wheel drive track car. Yeah. He a thousand goes, bucks is different. Would you lemons it? Well, the, working on it is apparently a huge pain in the ass. He's like, do you want to change the park, spark plugs? You got to take uh-huh. the intake manifold off. Do you want to change the alternator? You got to take the intake manifold Like everything requires the intake manifold off because in the service manual, it was like servicing most of these just take off these four bolts on the bottom and drop the front subframe. Like oh, it's like an engine out yeah. Audi four point two situation. Right. So I went, Oh, I'd rather get a Civic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean those those fucking like late nineties, early two thousands civics are where it's at. Yeah. It handles great and yeah. it's way more uh way easier to work on. Yeah, and you can get like a four thousand dollar crate engine that'll be like, you know, crazy in one of those cars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, do we honestly? Do I honestly think? Honestly think, Teslas are worth the money, not just the Model Three, but the Model S, X, etc. It's tough to say because there is a range, right? You know, in theory, you can get a Model S for seventy-five grand, but you don't really see them. And the, and the, the ones I've driven were like one hundred and fifty grand. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, if a mo- if if you get maybe the lower end ones like yeah maybe like you want to get the 100d but like 
do a couple of those launches in a row. Like that shit ain't comfortable. <laughs> like, it's not <laughs> it's true. You know what I mean? Like it's if if you're really just driving around. I think even the slow Teslas do zero to sixty in the fours. Like it's not the hundred. The hundred D is like owning. You know the 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 dirty hairy hand cannon. You're <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I got this. How often you shoot? Like oh, once a month, it hurts. Yeah. 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 Um, I think the X was overpriced because it had so many problems out yeah. the gate, and it was just that just because of that. And they, the the market went nuts, and it was like, oh, these are one eighty. It's like these are. I think the breaking. X is probably overpriced. Yeah. It's expensive. It's like gimmicky and finicky. It's not good looking. It's no. not a good looking vehicle. No, it's not. It's very egg like. Very. <laughs> um, it's not really. It's not really for me. The windshield is amazing, but that that is it for me. It probably probably be dope for autonomous though you know like once you're turning your seats around maybe yeah. you know what i liked it mm, as in, when uh thadius and i went to amsterdam we got one as a cab from the airport it was a really nice airport cab yeah that that made a lot of sense actually i really and then the, and our cab the, our driver really enjoyed it as as his cab I, I and it had a lot of miles on it quiet driving you know yeah. I, mean, I think teslas are great for that or electric cars in general well amsterdam converted their whole airport taxi fleet to teslas and Whoa. they have a giant supercharging station for them at the airport wow. so people just run people into the city come back supercharge it and and they they you know and they never have a problem oh that's which cool. makes a lot of sense yeah it does you know yeah. um but uh yeah i think at a, at 150 or 160 grand uh, no but the wow. model 3 at 55 yeah Definitely. Here's a strange tidbit of information. How many miles, automobile miles, do you think are driven every day in Santa Monica? Santa Monica is a small city yeah. for people listening. I don't know. Do you know the answer to this? I do. How many automobile miles are driven every day in Santa Monica? Including would, people that come in and out of it? Yeah. Yeah, just how many cars, how many miles, uh, miles I bet it's like 50,000. Zachary? How wide is Santa Monica? How wide is Santa Monica? Way, is Santa Monica is way off. <laughs> <laughs> way off. <laughs> it's about nine hundred and fifty thousand. Whoa! Oh, wow. <laughs> I've been any, I wouldn't have been closer than that. Nine hundred fifty thousand vehicle miles every day in Isn't Santa Monica. That fucking crazy. Cause of the, crazy. Cause of the Santa Monica is not big. But there's a lot of damn people. A lot of downtown, cars, dude. Yeah, yeah it's a lot crazy. of cars. Well, people just pour through it constantly from yeah. going to Malibu. Coming a lot back, of cars like, and PCH. Yeah. You know, the PCH, you got too. a freeway that ends right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. does that count? The yeah, 10, probably. The 10's so, got to yeah. count. Yeah, that the freeway's got to count. Totally. PCH. Yeah. Hey, congratulations, folks. We brought it back to LA. You. <laughs> <laughs> we go back to the question. Uh, a girlfriend has a, a Mazda 2 and hates the power because it has none, presumably. She loves hatches. I, I can't, I'm sorry. I'm in a weird fucking angle, and she I loves cannot hatches. read this. GTI question mark Veloster Turbo uh, Mini's maintenance scares us away. Needs to be under 18 grand. Also, what do you think Subaru's next move is for the WRX? They'll make it uglier. I bet. <laughs> I bet they find a way to make it even bigger and even uglier. Mm -hmm. yeah. But okay. still, still good to drive. So but under 18 and hatches. I mean, the first thought is Fiesta ST. Mm -hmm. If you the Fiesta ST, I mean. It's a Mazda 2 with a lot more power. It's the same shit. Yeah. So if you like the Mazda 2 and hate the power and you want to go faster, you just get a Fiesta ST. GTIs are nice. We know this. They're, They're good. nicer cars. Controls are very light. The GTI, that's, that's for me, the Fords have more weighted, precise controls. The GTIs have very light controls. True. Pedal and wheel and shifter. Um, but that's just me. It's yeah, up to you. And those what are else? both. Well, <clears throat> you can get a Fiesta ST now for significantly under eighteen thousand dollars. Oh for sure. Right? They're yeah. like twelve to thirteen. Yeah. And a lightly used one is probably fifteen and sixteen. I mean eighteen might even be a no, you're not getting a brand new one. Probably not. Probably not. That but maybe be, like a leftover if there's some leftover one around, you know. Because uh, there's not making them anymore, right? They're mm -hmm. taking a break. So that is this new three cylinder one only in Europe? Nah, they no. just made they just came out with a new three cylinder Fiesta ST, but is it not in America? Can Tim go to f just Ford's website? Let's see if we can just let's see if you can buy one on Ford's website right now. Mm. Um, I was confused by this because a couple people like rev oh, but Ford is phasing out all the cars in America except the Mustang. Oh, here we Ford's go. not going to sell a Fiesta anymore at all in America. Ford decided this is an article from uh, CNET. Ford decided to keep the U.S. Fiesta ST around for one more year. Okay, and this was written in July of this year. So okay. they went. Uh, you know what? We'll keep it. All right. So you can still get a new Fiesta ST for twenty. For twenty, dude. If that guy, if this, if this commenter can stretch his budget to twenty, 
I would buy a brand new Fiesta ST before you can't get one anymore. I would still go lightly used because I think the amount you spend on a new car and then you drive it off, like the whole thing, you drive it off the lot, you lose three grand. Like, yeah. You know, I, I don't understand what the point, especially if you find an adult, like a probably adult owned But Fiesta if the ST, only difference between used and new is two grand, I might find a way to scrounge up the two grand. I agree with that. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah. Heather, having a new car is nice. Even if there's True. a depreciation, if you're close to it already, you know, the satisfaction of a brand new car, that full warranty, mm-hmm. the new car smell. Resale's easier. You, you, you never, ever question what the last person might have done with the car. It's a satisfying feeling. Yeah, that's it a is. good point. If it's, I mean, if, if you can make it happen. Um, all right, let's see. David Cook, best budget under 10,000 vintage sports car and daily driver. Jesus Christ. Under you want you want collect <laughs> you, you, you want good, fast and cheap. He <laughs> this is Next a person year, who wants good and fast vintage. And cheap. You want vintage reliable. Vintage reliable. Um, how, how I would old? say E30. I mean, honestly, it's under 10,000 vintage sports car that you could daily drive. You could do an E30. Yeah, they came down a lot. They're very mm-hmm. comfortable inside because there's so much room because the A, a and B pillars are tiny. Mm-hmm. Um, Is how, Miata vintage? This no, point, an early one could be. Yep. I still, I feel like those things are timeless and almost like they, they'll always feel modernish. Like even if it's, yeah. even if it's 2040, I'm not gonna look at a 1994 Miata and go, <laughs> look at that that's, classic that's car. Classic, you know, because yeah. uh, mm-hmm. they keep making them with the same, the, the same motivation. Right. You could go real old and get like, you know, a '66 Mustang. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it. there's a there's a a, a, a great cross section of muscle cars that you can get for under ten. Like a like a basic Mustang coupe with a V8 mm. are very cheap because yeah. they're not special. Right, we sold a ton of them. I mean, ten ten grand will get you a cool Fox body. Get you a nice Ooh. L. Get you a fun LX I saw with, a Cobra with some today. mods on it. I saw a black Cobra today. We probably saw the same. Probably one. saw the same car. Yeah, it yeah. was nice. It Fucking was driving kind of quick. Yeah, it was very it clean. Sounded good. Yeah. yeah, had the fan blade wheels on it. I liked it. Yeah, I was a fan. That'd be a way to go. I think the E30 is ergonomically superior and it's superior in a lot of other ways to the Fox body, but the Fox body is fun. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of where I'm at. That or if any, is it, is it, can you get a 325 for less than 10 still? Is that possible? Well, yeah. Like what year? Like, I don't know. I mean, I mean as opposed to a 318 or a three, like an E30. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. probably. I think they came down a bit. I think the bubble pops slightly. You might be able to get, uh, I mean, daily driver. Well, I was just saying an, an RX seven. F F C R X seven maybe. No, what were we talking about? We were oh no, wait, an RSX an RSX isn't old enough to be vintage. Not old enough, but RS I RSXs are not talked about enough because they're good. Right. They're good. Um, and you might be able to find an Integra. You could get a good in, like maybe an Integra G S R or something, possibly. Yeah, if it hasn't been stolen too many times. Maybe you could I mean a nineties Civic would be fun for less than ten. We grand. gotta know their definition of vintage. Like how old is this person? Because vintage to me is a sixties or seventies car. Yeah. You know, like Gen two Camaro that's yeah. beat up, but you don't want to daily that. <laughs> no. Like that's before air conditioning was figured I, out. I rock. <laughs> I don't think you want to daily that either, man. Depends on uh, the climate you live in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh oh the petrolog books. This dude sent us these things. So the comments are hope you like the petrolog books. They sent us oh, these yeah. things. They're like uh log books for your car. It's actually a good idea. You put, you know, when you buy it, you put some information in. And then in the back, all right, we're doing your free ad for a notebook. Every time in the back, every time you, uh, you, I mean, if you can, you want to keep track of your fuel. Yeah, yeah, and then and then notes. The bigger one for me though is oil changes because when I've changed my oil, I don't have my computer in front of me to punch into a spreadsheet what I've just done. But if I had this in the glove box with a pen, which I always have a pen, I would do that. Yeah, it's a nice book. It's like one of those field notes books. I'm a yeah. fan. It's got this transmission symbol, so every time your check engine light comes on, you mark a check there, which is what, what I'm going to do. Uh, tires, number of months on wear bars for me, that's two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's good. It's got you like serv- It's like a service manual. I like it. Good job, boys. Um, let's see. Do we think there would be have been a market for the Nissan IDX? Uh, could have been a real 86 fighter. I really want one. The IDX, I, gotta, I think, I was their their five ten Redux concept, right? Oh, that was gorgeous. Yeah, that it looked it looked awesome. super cool. I was a uh, definitely a fan of the concept car. There it is. They brought that to um, Supercar Sunday once. Did they? Yeah. Did it drive? Or they just put it on. They I just, think it was on a trailer. Oh, that, that looks like someone looks like someone's driving it. Motor Trend first drive. So cool oh, looking. I guess someone who drive. Yeah, yeah it's uh 
Rear wheel drive, four cylinder, short wheelbase. Looks looks fucking cool. I think they could have done it, but I think what happened was they watched the Toyota 86's sales go off a cliff, and they went, well, this might not be as big a market as we think. Especially when they already have the Miata, which takes care of a lot of the market Mm -hmm. that buy this, and then the 86 came, and like it that it's kind of soaked up the rest of it it was a really cool looking car though very good looking car if if it's possible that that's a driver and i could go drive it someone hit me up that'd be sweet yeah but um i can see why nissan i mean nissan at this point sells generic fucking cars they've stopped selling special cars i mean you could still technically get a 370z but come on and like all their suvs are now crossovers Mm -hmm. all their sedans are now just sort of the same bland you know they're not even doing the crazy thing like when they did that r spec thing they're not even doing that shit anymore are they a scary look into the future like no they just they just have figured out who their customer really is i mean i know they were in problems before um what's the guy who just died no that's fiat huh who's their who's their ceo marcion yeah he died yeah he did die was he he wasn't you mean carlos carlos going them yeah carlos going was nissan right yeah yeah um but I just think they know what their customer is, and and they 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 sell generic ass cars in volume. Yeah, I don't know. They don't even they, except they don't, for the GTR. They, yeah, true. Which yes. is their, their one thing. That's their one thing. Not that they don't like. They clearly know how to make some awesome shit. They just sort of choose. I not think to. in actually in a way they're the most honest, realistic because they go, oh, the small sports car market is tiny. Mm-hmm. We already have a car. You know, there's already enough cars in it. So we don't need to make another one that will then not be bought by the people that say, isn't this awesome? Like yeah. every time you see Jalopnik Comics or, or wherever that's like, why don't they bring X, Y, Z here? It's like, because you can't afford it. And because the people, <laughs> the people that can't, who can't don't afford it care. don't want it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it sucks, but it's true. Yeah. there's. I mean, it's the same, you know, the, the, the uh, inequality gap, you know, is growing. And so there's a... The, the market for fucking 600 horsepower SUVs is booming and the right. market for $25,000 sports cars you know the, look at the market for $10,000 vintage analog cars is booming the market for you know $150,000 500 horsepower SUVs is booming the market for million dollar hyper cars is booming but the market for twenty to $30,000 fun sports car is almost dead you're saying that the beginning of the the, the <laughs> The lower middle income, middle America, or not middle America, middle income uh, is shrinking. I don't yeah, no way. That can't be. That's just <laughs> no that's way, just bra. So fake news. Um, let's see. But thank you for the question. Uh, podcast gets you through the workday. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, thank you for all of you people who just sent us money to say thank you for making the podcast. We appreciate it. Uh, car review, Cali only. Presumably, they mean Zach's one takes. Zach, are you accepting remote submissions for one takes? I am, but I'm putting them in a list of like, <clears> if, if I get there, there, I'll you know, there's people in Florida, Arizona. It's like, you know, a lot in the Northeast. Yeah. So if it happens that I'm going to those places, I have the list and I'll hit those people up. What did you drive uh, today besides the Contour? Uh, Contour Challenger, sorry, Charger, oh, Charger, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, and a second gen R32 GTI Volkswagen. Sec- oh, too. second gen, the the Mark Five. Mark Five. Oh, how was it? Uh, eh? It's exactly what I thought it would be. It was like it's not an Evo or an STI. It's it's slower and less engaging than those, but feels like it's made better and feels heavier. It understeered less than I thought. It felt more comfortable in the corners than I expected, considering how heavy it's. Four thousand pounds. It's four thousand pounds. With the uh, owner said, "Let me look it up." No way. Two thousand. <laughs> That would be insane. That'd be crazy. That was thirty six hundred pounds. That's, That's still very difference. heavy, but but wow. <laughs> but you know, he was the, a little the, off. The weight distribution. Maybe with the bad. two of you in it, was he that, a larger boy? No, he was. He was my size, but you know that's still whatever. Um, it's got bad weight distribution, as you'd expect for a, a lot of nose. Beast. Yeah, it's like fifty eight. It's like very similar to the new the Audi S threes and stuff like that. Yeah, A threes. Um, it's an all-wheel drive kind of fun cruiser, you know. Is it it's, dual clutch or stick? It's DSG. Yeah, are they all yeah. DSG from In that second one? Second gen, yeah. Yeah, and it was the first. It was the first year of the DSG mm-hmm. for them. And it was faster shifting than I thought it would be. Uh-huh. It was only. It was probably like twice as slow as the as the new Chargers automatic was. Like it okay. wasn't. That, it didn't hesitate that much. Downshifts were pretty good. Like like, like usable. Like would totally. you like if you were to buy something like that today, it wouldn't feel super old. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, I like DSG a lot in the Volkswagens, but mm -hmm. when you put it in park, there's that slop. You got to oh, set the handbrake. Yeah. Wow. You put it in park, and then it still moves like six inches. It moved a lot more. Than <laughs> I was like, is it in park? It is in park. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a nice... It's a nice car, and yeah. that's always what it was. It was like, look, let the tuners, <clears throat> let the let the kids go play with the STI and the Evo. Yeah, this is a car you could. It's the gentleman's own. hatchback. It's the gentleman's hatchback. Yeah, you could own it for ten years, yeah. and people wouldn't think that you're, you know, still trying to act like you're twenty. And then you call fucking Marcel at HPA. Yeah, and go vroom vroom. And it sounds good. I was I've been wanting to drive one of these. My roommate had one after college and wouldn't let me drive it because he knew all my stories of doing donuts in my STI. <laughs> so he's just like, you cannot drive this car. Yeah. So finally I got to drive, you know, it was blue, it was the right color. Yeah. It's nice. It feels like it's put together well. How, did it have a lot of miles on it? Like, 100, had 100 miles. And it was still thousand. still tightly screwed together? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Le mine's my least favorite of the R's, I, I think. Um, the new one's nice and the first one is nice. The Those shape are, of it, it was the beginning of what they did, like three generations right. of like the egg shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I wasn't a huge fan. No. And it's electric steering. It's early electric steering. So it's like, bleh. Yeah, so you yeah. turn you turn, and it does turn. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you gotta, you're watching out the, you, you only know it's turning by the windshield. Word. Yeah. That's cool though. Um, someone wants to know if I thought about bike parking and gear. Oh, motorcycle and gear, sure, yeah. If you um, have yeah, money, we, uh, I, <laughs> no, I mean we could definitely do that. Um, I have not thought about um, renting spaces that are smaller than one parking space. Um, if you, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, for sure. If you've got a bike and you, I can absolutely have a, a gear area and uh, and places to store bikes for sure. Matt at the smoking tire dot com. If you're in LA and you're interested in storing a bike at my place. I can I can uh, find a place for you, definitely. <clears throat> wow, excuse me. It's been a long fucking day, man. Mm. Started at six o'clock in New York. Okay. Ooh. Top two modern car upholsteries. Hmm. Antiques have lots, uh, but what are the top two modern car upholsteries? Wait. What have you seen, huh? Top two modern cars. So like, I don't understand this question. Uh, like, uh, your your what are your favorite interiors of like what's happening right now? Like, I oh, I can think of S -class. one. S class, the S class. <laughs> yeah, it's real good. Yeah. Um, um, I like the I like the cloth seats that we had in that BMW M3 at Grid Life. Man, we got yep. the cloth seats. Those, Those are smart. Yeah, when you have a good European car with that really tight cloth, that shit is nice. Doesn't get hot or cold. Right. That is That's cloth good. is good. Leather sucks if you live anywhere where it gets hot <clears> or cold. Uh, I guess it's not current, but I had that. Um, oh, he said modern. The 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 V eight. Uh, sorry, V twelve Vantage S with the seven speed dog leg manual had that uh, sweatshirt material. Where was the sweatshirt? It, like, I mean, like cotton, you, like soft. like it. It felt like. Tim, can you pull up V twelve Vantage S interior? The press photos, I guarantee, will show it because it's like the interior looked like a fucking sneaker. No, not that one. Hang on. This. No, go to, sorry, go down. That, 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 that. So that here, here's oh. that picture. So I, I don't know if you can really tell, but it's the the gray material was this this specific type of ultra suede that f really felt like a dope pair of sneakers. It looks, and that was it looks particularly like a, fucking like a, cool. An Alcantara, but with more depth. Yeah, like a fuzzier. Alcantara. Yeah, like a deeper pile. If you were talking right, about a carpeting, right, right. yeah, it's the, yeah. it's the lamb's wool of Alcantara. Yeah, if you if you go look at my um the video of it, the V12 Vantage S seven speed manual. Um, I really like the it. center stack of that car. Even though when I drove one, I found it hard to use. Mm -hmm. I saw one at uh Le Mans this year and it just looks nice like the that you know you got the center dials that look really great and then the little black buttons are all like really dark shiny black with the ring of chrome around I each like of the them. way that they're defined on that yeah. panel like too many touch panels don't define their sub panels it'll mm -hmm. be like one bit of piano black but I like that this is that carbon with yes the with the miniature this is the AC. The grouping. This is the grouping. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was really nice. Shit is important. It is. Totally. Because the new car is just a sea of, it's got 31 black buttons that are all the same size. <laughs> um, David wants to know, what does the name 1552 mean? Uh, where does it come from? No idea. I have no idea. Is that is that a, wheel is that a Van, Halen, Van Halen album? I definitely don't know. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it. I don't know. Look, You want to look on their website and see if the about us section says what it means? Well, I'll move on. Other 80s cars 
that you want to see safariid dude there's a lot i mean if like i mean you can start with like the volkswagen golf country which is already for a four by those yeah. things are fucking dope are they, they still are. can you still get them for reasonable amounts of money I if don't that know dude if was asking about daily drivable vintage sports cars i would try and import a volkswagen golf country can you get a picture yeah, of one of those sick. There, it's a it's a Volkswagen Golf, but it's a fucking four by and it's lifted. Oh, it's dope. And they usually have good uh, interiors too. <clears throat> oh, look at these fucking things! It's so awesome. You I could, mean, these things were like eight to ten thousand dollars a year or two ago. You can also import BMW three twenty five wagons, the iX, the iXs yeah. for like five grand. Can you? Well, you can buy them in Europe for like thirty five thirty five hundred to six grand, and yeah. then you import it. Which IXs are cool. A friend of mine had an IX coupe that apparently was very rare. Oh man, that'd yeah. be so fun. The Golf Country is badass though. So if you Dude. but like you put the right wheels on that, you do the right interior, boom, instant safari. Overland. Yeah. Ga gambler. Um also Previas. <laughs> because of course. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. I'll never look at them the same way. No, any any car that has good on-road dynamics should have good off-road dynamics. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, you know, you should be able to keep it pretty consistent. Well, off-road dynamics, it will feel the same off-road as on-road, but at a lower speed. Right. Like it, this is how it would drift if you were going 80 on the highway and it rained. Right. You know, but you're going 20 in the dirt. Yeah. Did we ever actually show the picture of the interior of my car? I asked you to pull it no. up, but did we ever actually get no, to no, it? No, no, no. Fucking crazy. The, uh, <laughs> this is just the door panel and it just looks awesome. Awesome! I like the shirt pocket. Yeah, that's an iPhone. Yeah, it's an iPhone holder. Yeah, oh, yeah he has, oh, it's nice. Yeah, it holds an iPhone eight. That's per, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's and good. And then um, you can kind of, you can see it's actually it has the correct Porsche pattern. See, it's not a flat piece. Have you notice this? It's got stitching in it. Yeah, it has the so stitching in it, but the, that that's like the OEM stitch pattern. Like that would be sort of the the leather. Oh right, and he, sti oh, he stitched it, it exactly I the forgot. same way as the OEM leather would have it stitched. Yeah, right. what is that called when it has that effect? It's it's kind of like what's the old, what's the old school like rumple it's tuck and roll, huh? but it's it's smaller than that. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah it's, it's shrunken tuck and roll. Yeah. And it looks fucking crazy. I don't have any more pictures because, like, the door uppers aren't on. It's just, this is just an assembled door card. That's but, cool. like, I had a fucking sucky morning. We, we fucking landed at LAX, and the pilot, I hate when fucking pilots do this. Go, hey, we landed, a, caught a tailwind, landed about 15 minutes early. And then we had to sit in the tarmac for 25 minutes. No and gate then, for us. Yeah, no yeah. gate. But then the plane that was supposed to come pull out of the gate fucking broke. So they were going to move the plane. To, they were going to push it out, right, to let us go in. Uh, but then they decided, no, 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 don't push it. We'll fix it real quick. Here, just wait. One hour and 47 minutes later, I got off the plane. No way. An hour and 47 minutes, we sat on the fucking tarmac. Ugh, and so I, I was, you can imagine how <laughs> happy I was with life. Yeah. And then when I finally got off the plane, Lee Keen sent me that picture. And, that and worked. all was right with the world. And I was like, yes, that's what this is about. Can we talk about Jersey for one minute? New Jersey? <laughs> right. So I needed to fly there on Thursday. And my my flight pulls away from the gate. Pilot comes on. We got a maintenance problem. The flap's not working. We got to pull back in. Pull back in. He goes, we're going to do some resets. Blah, blah, blah. It takes long enough where he goes, if you folks want to get off the plane while they mm -hmm. fix this, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Just stay close by. Jump ahead two hours. I'm in line of customers. That plane didn't take off till the next day. No So way. I ended up getting on a different flight on a different airline to make it wow. in time for work. So they kept saying, we're going to let you all know in three hours. And then it was like, we're going to update you in three hours. Was not this to take off. This was, no, I was in LA oh, trying to fly to Newark. God. So I go, when I'm in customer service, it's like me, I'm in first line behind me are two people from like New York or something like 60. It's a, a man, wife couple behind them is this guy who's like jacked wearing athletic gear, sitting in business class before, and I hear, and, and the older guy behind me is like, this is taking forever. Like, why is this taking so long? Why, why are all these people, all the, all the attendants started going on break. There was a huge line and they were like, I'm sorry, I'm going to lunch. And they just kept dropping like flies. <laughs> oh, and so no. the guy behind me is getting annoyed. And then the young dude behind me goes, this is ridiculous. I'm going to skull fuck the shit out of somebody if nothing happens. <laughs> Did you say that out loud at 11 a.m. in front of other human in beings? In an airport? Like, yeah. I have never had... I, I complain a lot that hyperbole is just ruining language. My case was just made. Like, the defense <laughs> rest. Un-fucking-believable. That's so funny. You should have seen what happened. After an hour and 44 minutes, they go... 
okay, we've been cleared. You know, they pushed the plane out of the way. We're, we're going to go to the gate now, but we can't move until the man in row 25 sits down because he was standing up and uh, fucking 150. <laughs> <head before. laughs> and, you know, and I'm sitting next to, you know, like uh, a mad black woman type. You know, who goes, sit your ass down. <laughs> and I was like, I'm sitting for shoes, I'm sitting across the office, and I was like, yes. It's like, I've been waiting to see some shit like that. And that guy sat down right quick. Yep. <laughs> and the lady got like a round of applause. Of course. <laughs> oh, of course. That's fantastic. Awesome. It was like black lady with purple fucking braids. I was like, you're amazing. <laughs> so so good. Funny. Oh, man. Sean, let's see. Um, Oh, if we could uh, take any car to our friends at Icon. Hmm. Ooh. Let's see. What would be any car that I could take to? I, I mean, it's. I think a, like a a first gen Range Rover, like a Range Rover County from the eighties. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see. I'd like to see a Range Rover like that that worked properly. That would be pretty cool. I mean, I would want to give them a Scout too because I was that was the first car I drove. So there's yeah. definitely nostalgia, and they'd make it work. Yeah, but. I've never seen a scout a, that didn't have like holes rusted right through the fucking plane. Yeah, they're not good at, you know, they make tractors. They should keep making that. And uh, semi trucks. That uh, um, that 50s rolls he did was incredible. See, that's yeah. the thing is they know how I to do that, trucks, but that's that, that was, was really amazing. awesome. <laughs> yeah. That was such a good vehicle. Yeah, I think may, what about maybe like a 70s rolls could be really fun. Like oh, a 53 no. Aston, Caddy or Aston something. Martin Lagonda. Aston Martin Lagonda would be you no know, interest. I, I really don't like the way those look. <laughs> I do. That and the Espada. It's so, the so Espadas angular. Espadas I'll give you. I think, I think Lagondas are just ugly enough that they're cute. <laughs> I bet. Speaking of which, I think I might. I think we're going to adopt another kitten. And uh, our friend works at a shelter. And the kitten that we found uh, has three legs. Like it's it's uh, it, it had one leg amputated. You like, name it Morgan. Oh that's, a, oh, that's a good one. I was thinking. I was thinking of calling it sticks. Oh yeah, like tr like a tripod, yeah. like that's the sticks, yeah. <laughs> not yeah. like the band. Right. Oh, like, I knew you didn't mean yeah, that. Yeah, like in production, like tripods are called sticks. So I was, I was thinking of that. That's funny. Apparently, he can run really fast and jump really high and does not know he doesn't have a leg. Oh, that's cool. Dope. Which leg is it? Front leg or back, back leg is missing. Back, right is missing. He's got a flat tire. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He seemed he seemed really sweet on video. I'm gonna look at it tomorrow. <laughs> but yeah, that's gonna be fun. I got an icon answer. Yeah, Westphalia Synchro. There you go. That's a oh, I like that. Another day. That's That'll a good be, idea. Yeah. That's a sick. that's definitely a good one. Yeah, I just saw a fucking. I just saw like a a hot rotted. What's the number of windows on micro buses below 21? So like an 18. Yeah, I don't sure. It was not a 21 or 23. It was like an eight. I think it was something in the teens, right. 18 window. And it was like lowered and whatever modified. It went for, it was $83,000 a fucking sold for. Fucking Christmas. Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> I love um, those things. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Right. Uh, 9971 GT3 or Cayman GT4. Mm. GT3. GT3. Uh, <clears throat> Matt, have I ever been a guest on any other podcast recently besides Spikes? Yeah, I was on the PKA podcast, which is Painkiller Already, uh, which is a, f it's a fun show. I think it's mostly about... Cooking with Oxycontin. It's mostly about <laughs> fighting and video games. But okay. you know who's on it? The um, FPS Russia dude is on it. He's not wow. really Russian. No, I know. But yeah, yeah. but he he's on it. So that, oh, cool. that makes it fun. I was wondering where he went. Yeah, he's on this show. Funny and it's I a know long they, show. It's they, three hours. Wow. So I was on that recently. I'm doing a podcast. What is your favorite car? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a podcast. Today we're going to blow up Rolls Royce using 50 caliber machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was on Joe Rogan a month ago. April, eight, no. April, May. April. Yeah, May, I, was on, I was on Joe Rogan. Um... Nothing else recently. We missed part two of Sean Smith's question oh, up here. Sorry. Uh, oh, about the off the safari treatment. Safari treatment. I have a Mark One, Mark Two, MR Two, MR Two. Oh, Mark One, MR Two with three SGTE swap. Uh, oh yeah, sure. Yes. Off road MR Two. Yes. Yeah. I a hundred percent. I'm in with that. Yeah, it would have better traction going up hills. That'd be fun. That'd probably be really fun. I support you. Yeah, that'd be support great. that. Uh, let's see. How cheap do we think the ND Miata will be in three years? I mean, I don't know. $24,000? I mean, they're not. What are they new? NDs are like twenty five grand new, right? Yeah, so in three starting. years, they'll be like eighteen. Think so? I mean, I'm do not. Do they hold that well? I think I just think they're too expensive right now, which is weird. Like, driven where they were like 
what did we test? The RF was. Well, RF is different. Yeah. RF is like an, a plus five. So no, I think I think you can get into an ND base. for twenty five new. So I think like eighteen. All right. Yeah. I'll trust you. Yeah. High t- high teens probably for a base soft top or normal soft top. Yeah, because ND yeah. new that that car came out in twenty fifteen. So at you know we're oh, talking yeah, we're three, talking about a car that'll be like years. six seven years old. Already. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Teens definitely teens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, should I turbo my V six Toreg? No. And no, I think no. You shouldn't. You shouldn't modify a. Tor- I mean, a Toreg has trouble running <laughs> stock. <laughs> Didn't they have a V10 for a while? Yeah, they had V10 <laughs> diesels. Those are still worth a ton of money. They are the V10 diesels. It's supposed yeah. to be horrendous in most ways, but they're also fun. They're horrendous in most ways. They make a lot of torque and they can tow. Yeah, yeah. You can tow a building down. Yeah. And then they'll break. <laughs> but I mean, there's there's videos of the, of modded ones launching. Wow, yeah. it's cool. Uh, I would not turbo the VR6 Toreg. There's, I mean, those guys at HPA make some dope ass turbo kits, but like, they're not cheap. And I would, I just yeah. wouldn't waste your money. I don't. I, you then you go from a slow SUV to a almost Look, like a slightly faster SUV. Carter, I hope you take this as nice as possible. You spent two dollars to ask this question. <laughs> That means you probably don't have the money to fix what happens when you break a turbocharged VR6 <laughs> that you built. And that car's, you know, it's, it might have problems already. I, uh, no, I would say no. Um, thank you to the people. Thank you, Brandon. Uh, this is for Zach. Oh, turning on to what? Dinner with Racers. Great yeah. podcast. Um, Heckman's going to be on soon. I got his contact info. Just oh. make sure you keep listening to our show. Don't leave us. Um, and was that the end? Was yeah. that last one say? <coughs> Same one to follow up. Second half. Oh. oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Thanks, guys. Um, shit. What else we got going on? What do we have coming up? So I, we got, we have a podcast. Today's Tuesday. We have podcast Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Monday. Yeah. So we got the. You know, we're gonna go back to having a, a normally scheduled show. Thank you for those who are patient with us on this one. Um, We've got. Let's see who do we have with John Klein. John Klein tomorrow. Alloy roof. Alloy roof is coming is Thursday awesome. at four o'clock. Um, the man that created Yellowbird. And then we got Friday at one. Tony Caroga. Yeah, from uh, Car and Driver. <clears throat> and then we have Monday at ten a.m. is going to be my friend Jake Auerbach, who is an auctions analyst at RM Auctions, and he's going to be uh, coming in. Good dude, young guy, good, great energy. He, I, this, he's already cool. I know he's already cool. Um, and he's going to be coming in, and we're going to be talking about some of the heavy hitters uh, coming up at the Pebble Beach oh, cool. RM Auctions. That, uh, what's going there? Um, Ferris Bueller. One the of those, Ferris like, Bueller car, yeah. Ferraris. They just sent me the catalogs. I love the catalogs. We'll bring them in next time. Nice. There's a GTO. That's that's going to be the big one. Is the is the GTO the? It's a uh, it's a Series One GTO. So the one that like everyone's thinking of, but it has Series Two bodywork on it, which was changed in period. Wow. Like it was a race car, and it, they raced it in the first, and then they changed it. So wow. They think it's going to be like seventy five million dollars. It's going to be a fuck, a fuck ton of money. Can you get a picture wow. real quick of the? Um, Oh wow, our retention's good today. Um, uh, a picture of the it's going to be the RM Auctions uh, Ferrari GTO, uh, Pebble Beach. Um, it's, it's weird when like some cars retain their value best when they're perfectly stock forever. Mm-hmm. This was like the bodywork was changed completely, but uh, it was done for not racing. that one. Fourth picture over one more. That one. Yep, yeah. that's it. So it has oh, the yeah. it has a slightly different bodywork with the sort of abbreviated rear end. I kind of like the other. Uh, I prefer the original. Yeah, yeah, go go to the top there, left there, and we'll see the original bodywork. That's yeah. the original. That's one of the best looking like rear three quarters on the planet. Oh my god! Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, the best looking. Yeah, that's, that's why they're. That's yeah, why they're uh, three. How many commas? Two commas. Three. Two commas. Yeah, two commas. One, two commas one plus day, a lot. Nine figures. That's yeah. It's real good. They a lot. Well, fucking day. Uh, McNeil bought just bought one for. Was it seventy five? What did McNeil just pay? Oh yeah, like 70, seventy five, right? For the silver one. Um, oh, is it silver? No, that's a two seventy five. Go down, Tim. the The silver GTO. Um, yeah, he, it was the only one that had never been crashed. Wow. <laughs> every every one. single other one had been damaged at one point or another, um, and not not the one he bought. What's cool is that back in the day they probably just hand hammered out fenders. Whereas, yeah, you know, no Bondo, but they didn't give a fuck back then. You know what is a gorgeous car? I just read about was the. Uh, Shelby T10. It was like a race car he made that, what the fuck apparently is that? had terrible 
can you, uh, can suspension you get a picture engineering. of a Shelby T10? I've never heard of this before. It looks rad, and then it was it supposedly drove horribly. Oh, it's like a Can Am. Yeah, it's a Can. I just thought the front end fucking badass. Oh, wow, I never, I didn't see the profile on the thing, but it had like yeah. these little painted canards that looked badass. Yeah, I just that's, think that looks that's rad. a dope looking little car. I've never yeah. even heard of that before, and it drove badly. Apparently, it did. <laughs> Apparently, the, the suspension design was not very good, and uh, and it, it was only raised for like one year. But I mean, it's it pretty cool goddamn cool looking. I yeah. think. I mean, even if it sucks to drive, I think I'd still like to roll up to the Monterey Historics and that fucker. What's well, cool is it probably never won anything, so it won't be $8 million. Mm. Is that a Testarossa Spider to the right of it? What is that in the back right there? It sure looks like it. Uh, yeah. Oh, it yeah, is. It is? It is? Mm -hmm. Ferrari Testarossa Spider? Yep. How about that? Yeah, I'm going to England to drive that shit on Monday. <clears throat> Testarossa Spider. Oh, yeah. we were. So... How's the fit and finish on the tops of those things? Like aftermarket okay, wait, convertibles so, can yeah, be. Yeah, so this car. So I'm going to risky. England to drive. Ferrari made one prototype of a Testarossa Spider. I'm not driving that. In period, there was a company that made like ten of them, and this dude found one. I think the silver one is it. <clears throat> That's actually the one. And it, I think it, it's he restored it himself. It was in a state of disrepair, and it's and it's sort of slightly rat rotty, I think. But either way, it seems fucking awesome. And uh, the guy who owns it is like a major Ferrari aficionado and has a daily driver challenge Stradale with a lot of miles on it. Wow. So I'm going over to, um, it looks fucking spectacular as a convertible. Yeah. I mean, you can't, mm -hmm. you, you really think they should have made it because it looks like it should have gone that way. Um, well, because those the flare the the flares that themselves one, have think, such a nice hump uh, that that it adds like good. dynamic like a dynamic look right even though the top is flat as hell yeah yeah it's a different lid on the back yeah type go type in Tesla Spider Rat Rod and I think you may there's a couple there's a yellow red no it's it's gonna white. be like a gray um, you'll see you'll find it very there it is <laughs> so the one the one with the lights popped up on the right that is how it looks now. That's a picture from like months ago. Apparently, it's mechanically very sorted. Okay. So there's a story there. It's got a good personality. Yeah, guy restored it himself. It's got for, a good personality. For people listening, the car looks primer gray, and then yeah. it has red. The the, the fins on the, on the side strikes are red, and the mirrors are red, and the gas cap's red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going to drive this? England. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Windsor, the UK. It's for the drive. I know it is. The drive, the drive, um... Raderosa. Yeah, the drive, um, found a little bit of funds uh, and is enabling me to do some things. It's a cool experience. And I, I look at his garage is actually made of brick. That's yeah. how, because of course it's, it's in an old house. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Man, if it's mechanically awesome and looks that way, you're like, now I can enjoy this Ferrari and park it wherever I want. Yeah. Well, apparently, apparently it, it... it those are not the best photographs, but yeah, that's when he found it. Wow! And, he, and it looks completely fucked there. It looks better now. So anyway, cool. It supposedly drives very nice. Cool. So drop top Ferrari. Yeah. So we're gonna do that, and then I go from there straight to Grid Life. Oh um, yeah, in Atlanta. That's awesome. Uh, Grid Life X Radwood. Um, book to Trackhawk. That's Trackhawk. Fun. Lee Keen's going. I saw Lee's Forsberg coming. posting. Yeah, he's, he's, he's bringing, bringing a car. Uh, Lee's bringing Safari cars. Um, you should try to get lee a ride in an fd car because lee is very good at sliding cars and i was like have you ever been in a drift car before he's like no i'm like you should oh he you really of should. all people should yeah he really should so if they have the drift taxi out there or something i don't know if, if they do i might try and go that, in that fucking thing this year oh fuck you got yeah you should of course i should four door four door infinity mob yeah i'm not going to be doing fan car reviews but i think um Cicio at top speed is going to bring something out i'm doing some track hawk shit Oh, that's a was that a Koenig? Oh. That's a Koenig five twelve BBI. Mm, I like that found. wing a lot. It's weird. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, the drift thing is happening. The music thing is happening. Uh, the Beeline guys are going. The there's like a bunch of the Driving Wall Awesome podcast, the Slip Angle podcast. What other podcast is there besides there's me and the, I, th I think there's another another podcast. We're doing like recording some live podcasts. Sweet. Grid Life tickets are cheap. They're gonna be they're you know. It's gonna be fun. It's really fun. Yeah, I will be gone. But uh, if you want to camp, it. you can camp the whole weekend. Um, you can uh, RV camp if you want to do that, um, or you can get single day passes. I think 
as well. Either way, I'm going to be there. So if you want to meet me, come to Grid Life at Road Atlanta. Do we? Oh shit! Do we have a couple more questions? One more question. Uh, looks like four. All right. We'll, we'll, let me just blast these through. I'm sorry. I'm closing the super chat now because we're going to end the shoe. But thank you for all who have participated. Um, a couple people have just said thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. They've sent us money and said thank you. Wow. Nathan, you're the man. Wow. Thank um, you. And Alan wants to know, are we ever going to get to drive the Scarbo? Oh, yeah. Have you seen that Scarbo? John Klein drove it. John Klein will be on the show tomorrow. He'll tell you all about it. Um, it's for it? sale. Ooh. Or it might have just sold. It's for sale now. It's for sale. Yeah. So is he built like a, a vintage F1 car um, and then put like this LS motor in it with velocity stacks and crazy shit. But it's a single exit exhaust. Uh, it's yeah, like there an it 8 is. to 1. Get a picture from the Ooh, rear because wee. the eight into one collectors are the craziest thing. I saw if you scroll down a little bit. There it is. <clears throat> Just the engine. Look at that fucking thing. Oh, my God. That is the mm. tits. Wait, oh, that's not it. No, no, no. That's different. That's, that's Ferrari, but that is original. awesome. That one. There it is. Yeah, well, eight into one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a gorgeous car. Yeah. Really gorgeous. That's fucking sick. Yeah, that looks awesome. I, I, uh, I got to get John Klein to hook me up with that guy. Is he building uh, more? Is that the only? That's I one. I think that's the only one he's building, and yeah. Hayes knows him too, so you can get like get his contact info. If but, it's for sale, wow. he's probably not gonna let me drive it. He probably wants it to be perfect. That's true. Sale. Or he, you know, if he wants the press for you to help sell, help Maybe. help him sell it. That thing is so fucking dope. Yeah, that's really cool. Did you see that car? The the, the renderings that Jimmy Glickenhaus was fucking posting of his like next SCG cars. Uh -uh. They're like. I don't know what the I don't know what he's doing. Uh, they look like like vintage cars. Like that could be. I mean, are they good? I don't. They're just renderings. But like, I don't know, man. They don't like. Can Can you go back to Instagram and look up uh, Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus? <laughs> Sorry, the, there it is. Just it's right there. Um, and it, the, if you scroll down, there's some renderings he was posting um, of the the other car. And now his fucking SCG. There it is. Look there on the right. Oh, the blue. Yeah, the blue. Looks like a fucking Daytona coupe, kind of. And I want to be like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're building these, like, crazy advanced race cars, like... Yeah, but, I mean, what is super popular and selling really well, really well right now is vintage race stuff that has these kind... Like, you can't... There are no cars out today that have there's those more, kind of softer If you scroll curves. down further, there's more pictures. <clears throat> like the, That looks like a fucking... It's I mean, a, it's like a Ferrari 250 front. Yeah, uh, it's like Daytona a bit of rear. a Daytona coupe in the back. Like, but that doesn't. I don't understand if you want, look his look at his race cars. They're like prototype race cars you can yeah. drive in the street. Like that's crazy. Like, I don't see this working. Well, what is he? He's going to be super performance. That's what he'd be if that's where he's yeah, going. That can't be right. Front's kind of weird, but I. I think we, the market of curvy sports cars is exploding in price, like the E types and those. Re, re, the, the, you know, but does someone really those? want a brand new like those Wiesmann things? Those things were cool, but they sold like four of them, and that company went out of business. Yeah, like, that's true. I don't know, man. It's a little too close to that kind of that seven. That, well, that's different. So he's trying to do this. He's got this Baja boot thing. Whoa. So that. Is uh, I think that's what did Steve McQueen drive Baja on that? Or was it what, someone? I don't know. Someone that's, and he's trying to make a modern version of this like Baja racer thing. That I think is kind of cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. it looks cool. like a buggy with. It looks like it has LMOO two tires. <laughs> it could, you know, yeah. Might be Hummer wheels. Hummer H one wheels. I watched Fahrenheit four fifty one, the HBO movie uh -huh. they did. It was like real actors and stuff in it, like, and but you could tell like the budget kind of, <laughs> whatever. It's a yeah. good movie, um, but the you know it's slightly in it's supposed to be in the future and one of the cars they're driving is just an h2 with like black paint on it and stuff and mm. it's like oh okay yeah like that's yeah. yeah no thanks but see yeah see look at this this is when you build this i don't understand when you build a a, a full-on prototype race car that someone can buy mm -hmm. i don't understand how you also are trying to tap into the throwback market depends on how many he wants to sell because i i think the market for that kind of timeless beauty is really, really, really expensive unless you go with a, a kit Cobra is your only option, and that's the the literal only option. So if you can make something that has round, swoopy shapes that everybody loves and isn't $8 but million. Is it, is it that they're round, swoopy shapes that everyone loves, or is it that it's 
an, a replica of an exact car from this time period. I think, for me like, personally, you think, the you think there's a those... market for like a quote new <laughs> GT car from yeah, the seventies? Yeah, that's a good you point. Know? That's a good point. It would, know, if yeah. it if it it would have to drive great. You, great. you can't make a mistake. You yeah. can't have a misstep on that. Yeah. You know, because then it's like, okay, this gives us the feeling of those. Yeah. It doesn't have the cachet, but it, it looks the part and feels the part. Yeah, totally. But that's a that's a dangerous game. Totally. All right. Well, so that's. Uh, I don't know. I mean, look, I'll I will I'll wait till we see one in the flesh. But that rendering looks weird to me. It doesn't. The proportions look a little strange. You know, considering how pretty, it's hard to make a a prototype looking race car that is not kind of ugly just to make yeah. an original design. And like, go to that picture on the right, Tim. That rear view, like. I think he's made a pretty fucking good looking car. That's like, real. Yeah, that's very a cool. good looking car. And it's pretty good looking from every angle, too. It mm -hmm. doesn't have a really bad angle. Um, but that other rendering was like kind of awkward. It, it definitely has some weird proportions happening. Yeah. But it looks like it also looks like a inexpensive rendering. And I don't yeah. mean like he's cheap because I know he's not. No, I mean, no, it looks like, like it's an early simple design. Yeah. It's not like a full 3D <clears throat> crazy yeah. effects, you know, looks real rendering. Yeah, and they could, they could just be throwing shit at the wall and see what sticks. That's I mean, I, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if they're actually going to build that. Because the P45 is gorgeous. Well, the P45 is Jason Castriota. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you know, yeah. They had one of, the, one of the most talented designers of the 21st century do it. Yeah. All, All right. right. Um, yeah. What do you got going on next? Uh, I'm going backpacking. For oh, like yeah. Vacation. Yeah, when vacation. Leave I leave Saturday. Oh, okay. Saturday morning. I got to edit next week's shows then, huh? You <laughs> will. I can, no, I can edit oh, two you of right. them. All right. But we can talk about this that, after the show is yeah. over, I think. All right. Thanks, live folks. Appreciate uh, those of you that participated in the Super Chat. We had a fun time today. Um, that's the show. Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own podcast at ShoutEngine.com. Uh, those are the things. I'm going to go work out because I feel like poo. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye.